Ooh, Dashi is pretty great. I like Dashi in Asian cuisine. And that is like, the first Japanese. thing to be said on a Monster Monday campaign that was released. Woo! Uh, choy. Dashi, Bok yeah, choy. I was going to say. There you go. I don't know what that is, but if y'all enjoy it, there you go. Um, welcome. Welcome, those who watch this, those who are re-watching this. Um, most likely those who are re-watching it. Um, welcome back once again to a day of fun, interest, and intrigue as we join ourselves on Monster Monday Season 2. Even more shenanigans in the 3.5 system with a new player who we'll be introducing quite shortly. Um, so yeah, we are back for a second season. Um, we're gonna jump right into it, uh, just to kind of get this ball rolling. All right. So you lot, as a group of four adventurers, your party, like many other, would start out uh, coming from vastly different backgrounds, very little knowledge or understanding of one another. Uh, though, as like every good story, the party has to start somewhere, and. Our story truly starts about a year prior, when the first two party members would meet. Uh, firstly, our adventurers, Tun Tun and Dutes. Uh, Tun Tun, you want to start off uh, with introducing yourself? All right, yeah. Um, so Tun Tun is a Zaraton, uh, which is essentially a giant turtle. And he is currently one year old, taking the world, and just walking around, meandering, not really sure what to do with himself, besides knowing that this one, like, soft, flaky, like, food item that he found along the way was just the most delicious thing he's ever had in the entire world, and now he is searching for that high again, craving those pastries. Um, he looks like your average snapping turtle, but, you know, just crank that size up to, like, a hundred, and that's pretty much Tun Tun right there. Really nice, loving, an animal. Alright. Uh, Dutes, you're up. Dutes is a seven foot, or sorry, not a seven, that's way too tall. Six foot tall, uh, Lache uh, doppelganger hybrid. Uh, he's aged in what would be Fey years, 122 years of age. And is out searching for his own adventure to see what can become of him on his time in the mortal realm. He is pale white skin with even whiter hair. And his eyes are black, but the pupils are white. Perfect. As... The Tun Tun would begin his world traveling. Unbeknownst to him, upon his back, a small mushroom circle would begin to grow. And through that, a connection to a domain to the domain of the Fey. As the days would go on with Tun Tun's travel across the vast ocean, swimming his way pleasantly and comfortably at a relaxed pace. One afternoon, a strange feeling would uh, kind of hit your back, almost an increased weight, Tun Tun, as you would find yourself with a somewhat large passenger uh, of Dutes, um, who, upon uh, noticing him, you could get this grand, almost, uh, almost in, uh, memory-inducing um, uh, and uh, Enticing um, scent would uh, dry or drive its way home into your nostrils. As the smell would grow, you would uh, turn to see the small, well, smaller than you, uh, dudes standing upon your back, a basket in his hands with what looks to be one side slightly opened and what is clearly a bunch of pastries. As the two of you would kind of begin to talk uh, dudes being stranded on your back in the middle of the ocean and you swimming along now with a passenger uh, you two would find yourself sharing a strange and almost um, kind of sweet uh, bond over the pastries that uh, dudes had brought through from the Fey realm uh, 
um, as you two continued your travel. Next, we we're gonna we have uh, two other members of our group. We're gonna jump over to uh, Melvin and Gygax. Uh, Melvin, you want to go first? Introduce your character. Sounds like I got ju back just in time. Perfect timing. Uh, hello there. I am uh, Melvin. I am a uh, pretty small beholder, about two foot in diameter. Uh, pretty young. Uh, obsidian skin with a violet colored eye only about 13 years old just trying to find my way in life and you know maybe meet my dad all right and gygax many many moons ago before i became sentient i was a regular mimic in a dungeon i would do the regular thing you would expect of a mimic in a dungeon and disguise pick fight and eat ah uh, those are the simple days then one morning, I awoke to who I am now. I had shrunk in size from 15 cubic foot to 1 cubic foot. But I figured that over time, I hopefully will be able to change. I look like a mimic that you see in a dungeon. A treasure chest. With many, many feet. I can disguise myself as other things. Uh, when I am in creature form... I have red hair and yellow eyes. I am one cubic foot. And um, be careful what you say. I will take it to the value of that word. All right. As is common amongst uh, most of the beholders, Melvin, you would find yourself spending a decent amount of time exploring to find a lair you'd call home. Upon one fateful day, a small individual chest would catch your eye for its unique design of having many many feet underneath it though somewhat wary of all things melvin you like any other would take the box with you and find yourself uh, putting it into a small sack just in case uh if it being something far more dangerous later one day after realizing many of your belongings had gone missing, uh, you would finally meet the small mimic that is Gygax. Um, though familiar with the fact that some nations, of course, have domesticated mimics, Melvin, you uh, had f believed that you had finally gained a friend as you and Gygax would kind of start to slowly uh, bond on your travels, Gygax being regularly fed while you continue to spend time and have someone to talk to. Uh, the two of you would begin traveling together, still searching for a new land to call home, where Melvin uh, would not be attacked as he had been uh, so many times as you pass by cities, Gygax and Melvin. Um, as well as, of course, to learn, to study, and how to defend himself like the other beholders of legends. As the two of you par oh, it's the two parties would find themselves drawn to the legendary lands of the Illithid. One of the one of the sweets, or one for sweets yet tasted, another for a place to call home. We come to our last party member, uh, who unfortunately, due to dropping from the campaign, will be acting as an NPC for the time being. Balthasar, the proto fiend who seems to look almost identical to a smaller pit fiend. Uh, he finds himself managing to have just arrived on the Illithid Island, um, having heard legend of this uh, land and its many uh, magical uh, amalgamations and creations. Um, as he would start to find himself going digging further and looking around the city or the uh, island, he would find himself deep within the city of the Illithid, looking for the forge. The legendary forge he had heard about from his homelands a forge that was supposedly capable of taking any sort of resource put being put into it and crafting out wondrous magic items of yet legends unknown however like as is the case with most uh greedy or curious adventures balthazar would find himself almost immediately noticed by the illithid there and find himself burning a teleportation scroll of some sort to get out as he would find himself now suddenly on the beach seeing these two parties coming together or coming or landing onto the island in two separate groups balthazar would take a week of uh, time 
coaxing both parties together and bringing them all together for food, sweets, and a kind of a, a nice warm aura, a, aroma around the campfire on the beach. Um, the rest of you find now find yourselves gathered as this group of four or five uh, adventurers um, on a sandy beach mid-morning in the early spring. Um, the, the nice pleasant breeze coming off the ocean. It's a nice balmy 70, 80 degrees um, with a nice cooling ocean um, coming high on hitting all of you as you sit around relaxing. What would you all like to do? Tun -tun. Uh, as Tun Tun speaks out. I believe I would like to just mosey around the campsite finding mm -hmm. new weird things to munch on. Okay. Um, give me a, a general like search check while you're kind of popping around. I want to make sure he doesn't eat anything too important. Okay. 14. All right. Um, as you kind of start to find yourself jotting along around the edge of the campsite looking for anything of interest, any bites, any strange items, creatures, rocks. Um, plus two. Okay. Uh, you find uh, with the... The somewhat little larger, um, gray-skinned, elvish-looking fellow of uh, kind, of, kind of following up behind you, um, you kind of kick about and find a strange-looking um, rock that seems to have almost a brightly colored, uh, like rainbow-esque oil uh, design to it. As you kind of move about, looking at it, changing the view of it, like as you uh, or the perspective, you see it seems to change colors from a purple to a bluish, and then back as you kind of move about. Um, the rock looks to be pretty enticing um, and quite unique. Tonton is it. swaying his head back and forth, seeing the colors change. I lick it. All right. Uh, as you lick it, um, it's cold and very uh, metallic uh, to the taste, um, almost giving a, uh, a kind of flavor you haven't really tasted before, Gygax, um, as it seems to kind of, for a minute, minute make your tongue uh, tingle uh, as it seems to go away. Do, do I... Can I see what this thing is? Mm -hmm. you, it looks to be a rock from your perspective. You want to give me appraisal check uh, or a knowledge nature to see if you can figure out what it is. Uh, I'm going to appraise it. Okay. I hand it over to Dutz. Right. I take it and give you a three. <laughs> a three? <laughs> uh, it's a rock. It's a fancy rock. You're pretty mm. sure... It's uh, it's uh, it's definitely a rock. It's probably not got much of a coinage value. But rocks don't shine this particular color, though. Uh, While he's doing that, I'm rocks also... can shine all colors, silly. <laughs> I'm also going to appraise. Okay, go ahead and roll. Oh. Uh, you gotta put you can't put the plus, uh, space for the plus. I think it's what the. There you go. <laughs> and. Uh, it's it's uh, another. It's it's definitely a rock. Uh, as you kind of look it up and down, you kind of get an idea that it's not your average stone. Um, I rolled a four. It's not your average stone, um, but you're definitely sure it's uh, not anything of real major value. Uh, as you look it up and down. Bible to me. Does it look like it's magical? Oh, um, you can give me an appraise check if you want, or you can try to do a knowledge arcana on it. I will How do a knowledge arcana. All right. How big so is this? Seventeen. Oh, uh, incident here, one sec. Uh, it's about uh, less about half a foot in diameter, uh, on all sides, roughly kind of rough, but yeah, uh, seventeen. Um, it's not a magical rock. As you look it up and down, this doesn't seem to have a natural component to it. There's no mana coming flowing off of it. Um, however, you can take a second and look a little closer uh, as you realize 
that it is made of uh, gold. It's just... It... This is a gold rock, guys. Oh. I know what Damn. gold tastes like. That doesn't taste like gold. It does not. It's also darkened its color and not gold, as you uh, notice. I'm sorry, it's what you were saying? I, w I was just saying, oh, um, probably shouldn't eat it, though. Yeah, I know what I'm gonna do. Tingle. I'm gonna I'm gonna pick it up with my mouth, put my head in my shell, and put it with my other collection of things I found. So just right, to make my sure... skin folds of my neck. So after 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 Gygax mentions that makes his tongue tickle. Uh, Tun Tun is going to try well, and I, I'm gonna like like pinch it with my my turtle beak. Uh huh. All right. And uh... like put it inside because it's, it's in, a pretty rock it's in dudes hand so yep all right uh dudes are you just gonna let him uh take the rock as he comes over to grab it from you? <laughs> have i seen him do this before uh put things in his shell um uh, well you've seen his head disappear with random items um into his shell and then not come back out with them um so yeah roughly I think I would rather know what this is exactly before we just put it in your neck. It might, you know, harm you. Hmm. Ton Melvin has a sack. Put it in there. I think, yeah, that might be best for now until we can get someone with a higher check. <laughs> I get bored with this really quickly and start looking again for other stuff to eat. <laughs> Uh, yeah, as a few minutes go, or a few second moments go by, you find um, Balthasar's bag and find a few rations uh, unattended inside of it. I've had rations before. It's mm -hmm. nothing new. I don't want to eat it. Okay. Uh, as you kind of dig, or uh, you pull yourself back, you do notice there's a strange piece of paper that kind of falls out. Um, it looks somewhat old and have uh, a weird looking, a bunch of drawings on it. Um, as if uh, someone was trying to make some some sort of map or grid uh, as you kind of look it over. Um, you haven't eaten a map before. Hmm. Hmm. I'm turning it around in different directions, looking at it. Yeah, uh, you all... Not, mm -hmm. not hiding or anything, not disguising, just... Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, you all kind of see Gygax off to the side, uh, looking looking at this map. That uh, as Balthasar seems to be kind of very focused on his meal over at the little fire set up. I I'm also very intrigued in the piece of paper that Gygax is holding. Okay. What do you got there? As Dutes and Tun Tun come over to you, Gygax. Paper with drawings on it. Can I see it? I hold it up for him. You look down. Oh. It's, uh, between Tun Tun and, uh, Dutes, it's a map. It's pretty clearly a map. Uh, you go ahead and, um, oh shit. Is there uh, any, uh, writing on it? Um, there is a few notes scratched in, uh, Primordial. What do they say? Do you read Primordial? With the... Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Um... Uh, yeah, so you, uh, you could just you could just type it to me if, if it's not if the other people are allowed to know. Because oh. I mean, I can't really talk to him about it. Oh, that's fair. I'll, I'll I'll write it down for you. Um, as you all kind of look over the map, though, uh, you do notice some scribblings on there. Um, does anybody else speak Primordial or uh, for reference? No. Nope. No. Okay. Um. As you look it over, it looks to be a set of underground tunnels going off in every different direction with, like, a kind of a large core. And you see, like, a big red question mark on the core at the center of it. Uh, and it seems in an arrow is pointing off to the scratch it notes off to the side of it. Uh, or onto the side of the paper. Uh, this looks to be something underground, maybe a cave or a, a city or something. It's kind of hard to tell as you look it over, uh, but it's quite organized, uh, whatever it is. Does it look like some kind of dungeon map? Um, give me... Actually, you know... I do me... have dungeoneering as a knowledge check. Yeah, go ahead and give me a knowledge check for dungeoneering. Uh, dirty 20. 
Um, it's not a dungeon, but it looks identical to ones you've read about and heard about. Um, I'm since I'm from a dungeon, I also have knowledge dungeon. Yes, I'll uh, go ahead and roll and see if the you same. can also recognize anything else beyond that. Um, as uh, with thirteen, uh, yeah, looking it over, um, Col uh, Gygax, you are you look over for a minute. You're sure you recognize the pattern similarly to dungeons you and Melvin have both gone to, um, but for a moment something also catches your attention. This is similar, and Melvin, for a moment, as you take a second look at it, both of you, catch that this is very similar to the du or to the layout of the place where you found uh, Gygax. Not identical, but many of the design, uh, the way the patterns are set up for the hallways and how they seem to be very set in a grid, it's almost s creepily uh, similar. Looks similar to you see that too, home. right? Yep, I'm looks close. similar to the neighbor's home. Yeah, I thought so too, but I don't think it is either. It's not my home. Mm. Are there any like entrances or anything that uh, I can see nearby? You do see some little slight like areas where it looks like it looks like a cave-in was drawn on, or like markings of blockings, but with arrows towards it. Um, as Tun Tun's kind of read, looking over and reading the words, um, but uh, it does not look like it. However, you do notice there is a strange circle on in one of the hallways that's drawn on it. Um, no, no other markings, just a circle uh, for an area. Uh, the hallway itself looks un, un like nothing spectacular. It looks to be normal overall. Um, a simple five by five hallway going straight down um, towards uh, the rest of the stronghold or dungeon. I'm gonna grab a just random stick off the ground and walk st start walking to Balthazar. Okay. As I munch on the stick. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Do we want to check out this circle area? I I would like to honestly. As Melvin and Dudes kind of are looking over the map, still thinking this, uh, Gygax walks over to um, the or Balthazar, who still seems to be very engrossed in eating whatever he's uh, been working on. Balthazar. He kind of turns his, uh, and like a little bit of a cold, it's like a little slight cold sweat. He goes, "Oh, yeah, uh, yes." Mm -hmm. We found a map, or I found a map in your sack. And we figured it was an underground dungeon kind of thing because it looks similar to the one that I came from. It looks similar to the one my neighbors have, but I don't recognize it. Where is it at? Um, can you want to go it? look? He kind of looks side to side and kind of looks at each of you, and then takes a second and um. Uh, he kind of takes a kind of looks at you, and you can see he's grasping for words, Gygax. Um, and he goes, it's, uh, yeah, it's nearby. Yeah, it's it's definitely nearby. I'm, uh, looking for a home. I, it, I like the layout of that place. Can we check it out? Are there mimics? Um, you, uh, you know what? Yeah, yeah, there are mimics there. Uh, and you know, it'd be a great helm for um, you, Melvin, as he kind of, you see uh, like a slight smile starting to perk up on his face. He goes, uh, you know what, how about uh, we wrap up lunch uh, and I'll, I'll take you right there. And he kind of starts like putting, kind of kicking some dirt on the fire. Um, I mean, you were the only one eating, so. I start looking around on what lunch is there to wrap up. I don't have anything to wrap it up in. I don't see any lunch. Um, he, he kind of looks at you and goes, "Oh, I mean, like, uh, uh never mind." He kind of like kicks some dust onto the little campfire and then like pulls up his uh, cooking equipment, puts it in his, starts putting it in his pack. Uh, hello. Yes. What's really in that place? Mimics? No, there is no mimics there. You're lying. There's not? No. What is truly there? Uh. You kind of, you see him scratch his chin for a second and goes, 
Well, they're monster. Intellect devourers are a pretty common creature found down in this part. Um, what else? Ah, morph trolls. They they come in hordes. They're definitely a danger. I don't recommend we run into those if we can. As he kind of turns back and starts putting his equipment away, finishing. Well, I don't doubt you. I still don't think that's the only thing there. What are you bringing us into? I would, as he puts his pack on. I would never bring you into anything. That would be... like Who who would do that to strangers that he barely know or uh, care about? Uh, can I see that map real quick? No. Well. Um. <laughs> it just well stares you at you. Place? Go ahead. How well do you know this place? Uh, in truth, I've only heard of this place, in, for most part, in legends uh, and stories around the taverns that I've traveled by. Nothing, uh... Yet this map is completely marked, showing multiple different locations. Marked off and one big red circle. Yeah, I bought that from an adventure. I like the sense mode of that. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> That's a 23. Yeah, he's, he's, he's fully lying to you. Why do you keep lying to me? I've done nothing but been nice to you. I've let you into our group. It kind of. I've let you mess with us. But now I'm not seeing much of a reason to keep you around if you continue to lie. Well, I mean, he kind of starts st uh, for you see the nervousness start to kind of go away as he kind of straightens himself up a little bit. Technically, if um. You, uh, if you don't want to, if you want to find that location, you kind of have to trust me. Doesn't sound like any of you could figure out where that goes, so, I mean. I mean, it would be relatively based on just finding out our current location and dragging you there. You could do that, or you could instead just follow where I'm going. I turn to the party. Do we trust? Should we trust this? I mean, other than him, I don't really trust any of you. I just met you. I. What do you mean uh, you just met me? We've known each other. For I a said week. other than you. Oh, okay. Well, if Melvin says we go, I go with Melvin. Ton 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 ton. What he said. Hmm. He more or less just said the same thing you did. You can understand him? More or less, I've learned. Though. I figured it was just like when you talk to a, a baby and uh, you just make them think you know what you're talking about. No. Usually when I talk to a baby, they just scream. Althazar kind of looks over uh, Dutz's shoulder from behind him and goes, I believe that. I think I'd scream if I saw you over me when I woke up. I hand Balthazar the map. He takes it. So you're going to trust me as he rolls it up? Yes, until you give me a further reason not to, which then I will have to do when I can't even take care of that. Um, uh, okay. He kind of he kind of nods at you at that, and not really picking up on the the seriousness that you're giving off. He seems to kind of just put the map away, um, and uh, kind of starts to turn and goes, uh, right right this way, gentlemen. Um, I think, you know, what? we're gonna go with that. Uh, as he starts walking uh forward uh, and starts heading in a northern direction. All Every right. now and then, I am going to ask to see that map. All right, he gives it to you each time, just hands it over to you. Uh, again, it's just it's an underground map. It doesn't seem to give you much of a, a showing of any features above ground to give you markers, at least not as of yet that you've noticed. Um, about an hour passes um, as you lot kind of wade across this uh, this rather hefty river um, and into the northern portion of the, the island proper. Um 
as you pass uh, over past the riverbed, um, slight cold water, uh, Gygax, uh, your toes definitely uh, get a, a fresh cleaning of experience for once. Um, you know, with uh, the rest of you feeling the heavy flow, I imagine uh, most of the water being, or the, the water being about roughly uh, two feet high. You lot, and, uh, as you're heading across, you start to hear a strange almost rhythmic singing and pounding that begins. And what as it starts to continue, as it continues, as each of you kind of comes across the river, it's almost as if they're clanging on something glass or metallic-like uh, as you hear the banging. Oh, God. Shaking my head. Can I listen to see what direction it's coming from? Yeah, uh, give me a listen check. Nope. Yikes. Uh, it is a seven. Uh, you hear the rushing water. You're kind of distracted by watching, you know, watching your uh, your companion Gygax making sure he doesn't flow down the river with the water being so high and kind of a little bit more rapid and rough than you, uh, most you were expecting. Is um, the uh, swim? Is the sound coming from the uh, the funky weird gold piece we found? It is not. It seems to be coming from around you. And Gygax, yeah, I figure you could swim, but I also assume that Melvin, not fully having a comprehension yet of your, what all your capabilities of, would be also watching you and make sure you don't get washed away. As a... Yeah, because I'm just flying over top of the water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can swim just time. stick a pseudopod on, on Melvin and float and just be pulled by him. <laughs> that works too. Um, as you let cross, though, you continue to hear the bang. Balthazar looks more nervous, dudes. Why are you nervous? He just kind of looks at you and goes, I'm not nervous. Um, I just don't like random singing in the middle of nowhere where there's supposed to be no civilization. I feel like that's concerning. Well, yes. But I get the feeling you know where, where it's from. Honestly, I can't actually say that I do. I know fear, and you sound pretty scared, bro. Oh, I'm 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 scared as all hell, but that's not that's because there's a. He kind of looks at you like and goes, you know, there's a monster that lives right across that river that is big enough to eat us, or is strong enough to kill a city, right? <laughs> that, yes. that that's not a place yep. you want to hang out. <laughs> yes, so I bet you should pick it up, take us to this destination you have marked on the map. You're you're right. You kind of like start turns and starts walking a little faster, heading towards the mountain or a mountain you see in the distance. As you lot are kind of heading through this forest, hearing the occasional like sounds of uh, screeching creatures running about, um, the uh, the occasional shouting and uh, crying out in com or in draconic or common, some from somewhere deep underground. As you continuously hear these sounds popping up and left and right. Um, you watch as a semi small looking troll about that's about two feet tall comes charging towards you lot through the jungle for a moment and as you lot are about to attack balthazar just kind of puts his hand up uh stopping you all as you see this strange looking um metallic almost metallic like dog creature with uh multiple tails that are spiked um long fangs that seem to be drilling some sort of green liquid out of them um and about Roughly four feet long, standing almost three, three and a half feet tall, comes almost out of nowhere, um, bites down on the troll, and pulls it off into the darkness of the jungle around you and disappears. Hmm. Um, as yeah. this happens, Balthazar just kind of looks at all of you with like panic in his eyes slightly and goes, Uh. Yeah, um. So we're just gonna. We're not going to move straight for the path. Uh, okay. Melvin, can I Sounds climb on top of you? No. Tun Tun will not. Tun Tun might carry you. Tun Tun, can I get on your back? 
Ten ten will nod. Thank you. Pseudopod to his shell and climb on back. Yeah, you climb on his back. He's got a couple of little, like, tr small little trees starting to grow out. Like, almost like small bonsais. Um, a little mushroom circle that you notice in the center of it. Um, it's quite a comfortable sit. It's just like a mossy rock, you know? Um, I sit on the shell behind his head, so I'm not sitting on the vegetation. Okay. Um, as you do so, allowing you to kind of see um, everything. Tunton, you feel a slight weight on your back, but it's nothing to you. Um, yeah. <laughs> You, uh, as you lot continuing to follow Balthazar up this, uh, start this hill towards this mountain, it start the trail starts to get more steep, but you also start to notice that the trees seem to almost be naturally cut away as you follow a pathway, um, straight towards, uh, what you now start to notice is a cave mouth opening, uh, in this large, this massive mountain, uh, that seems to peek into the sky well above the clouds. Um, he gets to the entrance and he goes, so, uh, we're here, um kind of like ushers for like puts his hands out to the side like ushering you forth where exactly on the map uh oh oh um he pulls out the map and kind of shows uh, kind of shows you one of the little cave ins on the southern portion of it and goes uh right right about here uh you notice it's about um you'd guess probably half a day's trek from where this entrance is to what is this big main center structure that looks to be something that has some weird markings and writings on it. Uh, but the, of course you can't read cause you don't know primordial. Um, yeah. Well, lead us in. Well, you're, you're, oh, he kind of looks, you're obviously the, the leader. You should, you should. Oh, Ned, go ahead. If I don't know Balthazar, if I don't know Primordial, am I able to try to decipher the script? Um, you like, decipher what it says, or uh, bu -bu -bu. you can piece together. That's for mostly ancient runes, but if you want to try, oh, okay. um, it'll just be a really high DC. Uh, I mean, sure, I'll try. Well, I rolled a two for a total of a nine. Yeah, the language doesn't make sense in any of the languages you know. Um, you just gather from it, it the the pointing and the uh, lines going off to the side to the markings looking at it. Um, that whatever this thing is at the center is what was the focus of this map. Like it was like whoever they were, the person who made this map was looking for that location. Well lead the way ah uh, well you're but you you know uh, melvin you're a beholder you're strong as all hell you should be the one to lead if anything tonton's gonna nudge balthazar a bit towards the front <laughs> as he does so uh guy guys you you suddenly see like you get closer to the back side uh, lower back of the uh of the creature and it kind of turns and looks at you both and goes ah uh, okay Okay, I, I got. I understand. I, I he puts his hands up. Fine. You guys all assume I'm setting a trap. Understandable. I would never do any th such a thing. As he turns and takes one step in, and you watch his body get obliterated. Uh, almost as if a dark smoke seems to develop from the ground quickly. You watch a loud explosion seems to come out, but almost condenses itself down into that area, not leaving a reverberating sound. And then it seems the spell seems to almost suck itself back down onto the ground. Uh, while Balthazar's parts go everywhere. Does his stuff remain there? Uh, his backpack falls straight down. I pseudopod the backpack and pull it towards me. Okay. Uh, give me a, a strength check for it, uh, just to see if, uh, how long it takes, or if it takes you a bit. Or a second or two. Yeah, a few seconds of pulling. It's uh, not comfortable, but you manage to grab that and pull his backpack over uh, and get a set of starting equipment um, of his. Pull up his character sheet real quick, and I will post up. He wasn't a very good guide. So Well, he got us to where we asked him to show us. He did. And now the question is, will the same thing happen to us if we step in? Uh, you suddenly hear, all hear a voice from, like, somewhat all around you that goes, Not if you do as I ask. The voice seeming almost very... 
elegant, very noble to your ears, um, and uh, calmed uh, as almost an, uh, a nice calming emotion uh, reverberates around you lot um, for a moment. And I'm just M Melvin's just looking around trying to figure out where the voice came from. Uh, I'm searching the backpack. <laughs> Fair. Um, okay. What is it that you want? Um, you hear for a second, uh, a, a sudden, a, a kind of, a slight quietness. And then the voice continues. Um, I have a job, if you'd be interested. Um, it pays, it feeds, and it's... Not as risky as what your friend was trying to uh, convince you to do. At the words, it feeds, I perked my head up. <laughs> he was trying to convince me of something? He kind of looks at you and goes, yes. I'm going to look over at Dude and start nodding my head vigorously. May um, I ask who we are speaking to? Um, he kind of takes a second and goes, Oh, my, my deepest apologies to all of you. I didn't even introduce myself. And suddenly, a, where that Balthazar once stood, a, this purplish uh, like smoke and light starts to envelop out of the cave. And you see a semi-strange, tall, pastel, pastel purple, lanky, bl lanky bodied uh, creature, almost dr draconic-like, at 12 foot tall, with a traditional illithid looking face, tentacles and all, um, you see some scales that are that seem to kind of very much pop up every once in a while. That they're not hidden, uh, but they're definitely not shown as easily with, for, because of the robes that you see this creature wearing. Um, a massive forehead uh, that very much allows you to tell there's something there's a there's a brain of a decent size in there as it seems to pulse and glow every few seconds. Um, and as he appears, uh, he goes. Um, <clears throat> my name is Zebrel, if you will. I, uh, I'd be interested in having you lot take on a job for me while you're here. Nothing beyond your capabilities. I wouldn't ask you to do something like kill an apex monster or anything of that sort. Just a minor thing I need taken care of that uh, has caused my people problems and that I don't have time to see to personally as I'm currently invested in a project I'm working on, um, far to the north of this island. Okay. And what is... Can we get further detail on the job? Oh, yes, uh, of course. Um, a, a group of um, morph trolls. Uh, you may have seen one on the island uh, as you've been walking through here. Uh, they're a little deformed and a bit too stunted uh, for the market. Um, and they, they managed to get out while I was transferring them between some pens. I use them for labor forces, typically to carry and like pull um, large quantities of ore. They're they got loose though in my death ore mines, and I know what that sounds like. It's not not there's no, the mat, the ore is very stable. It's blue. We've already made sure, but the problem is my rescue parties that I sent I sent down there got killed, and the slaves I have down there have also been being killed. I would assure you that of course the, while the mines are safe, the trolls are a danger. Would you be willing to take on the work? I'm willing to pay by the uh, individual uh, troll, if you'd like. Or if you're more interested, I um, am happy to offer uh, items in exchange. My people are quite uh, good at crafting, and we would be more than happy to um, offer, uh, if you're interested in like continuous service and continued jobs, a, uh, a higher payment, if you will of uh, maybe some magic items to help you a lot out. I know uh, new adventurers are always looking for equipment. Um, this would be for more of a continuous deal, if, though, if you are interested. Tonton will nod. He likes this deal. Uh, no. No. I mean, he didn't try to kill me yet, so I got no issues. No 
want to make sure I say your name correctly. All right, Gygax nods along. Okay. We will take it. He nods and goes, perfect. I right, thank you. You know, I uh, truly do appreciate you uh, doing me this favor. Um, kind of looks over uh, at the the uh, where the pit fiend uh, uh, bits are and goes. And while I don't really appreciate the infiltration that he managed to do, I was quite impressed with how he was able to do that without getting caught. Did he happen to have, like, a map or anything of the area that he had stolen from my people? Um, as he looks at each of you. Uh, he did. Uh, Gygax, can you please hand me the map? What was that? Can you hand me the map? Oh, here you go. I take it and hand it to you. The tall creature, Zabrel, he kind of takes it. Uh, the, you, you do notice that the hand seems to have some weight as it grabs it from you uh, and looks over and goes, Ah, yes, if you don't mind, I'm going to, I'm going to incinerate this as um, this was ill-gotten goods. Uh, and he kind of hands you a gold piece for it. I take it and... Can't exactly break it up right now for the party, so. Ah, <laughs> uh, the uh, the tall figure nods as he burnt as you see he like lights the map on fire. It, it incinerates and he goes. Now I've acti deactivated the magic uh, defenses I had set up that go down this uh, tunnel. Down and at the very bottom of the tunnel, there's a fork. If you follow the left most of the fork, you will find the Death Ore Mines. Uh, just follow that way down for a bit. And you should hear the screaming um, from the morph trolls uh, that are down there. They, they're a dangerous creature, but again, they're stunted, malformed. They should be fine. And kind of looks at you all and goes, I, uh, I leave my hands in your service. And he disappears. You get a weird sense that last phrase seemed to be a um, little bit strange for what you all recognize as common terms. Uh, but again, you're monsters. That could be just a, a reaction. Okay, I'm going to start walking down. <laughs> Tun Tun's got a one-track mind. Uh, Tun Tun, give me a reflex uh, save as you enter into the tunnel. Oh, because it is steep. I want to see if you can keep your feet. Yeah, or sure. You're gonna go Reef sledding down fly. with Gygax and have a very good time. <laughs> is reflex a? Oh, I see it now. Yeah, yeah there it is. Hmm? Uh, nineteen. Uh, nineteen. You you step in and uh, Kaz, you start to feel yourself leaning forward. Uh, Gygax, you can feel the uh, for the weight of uh, the turtle kind of start to lean as he almost has to stomp his ground his uh, feet to the ground as hard as he can to hold himself for a moment as he starts to slowly walk down. Uh, foot at, uh, one foot holding after one foot holding, trying as the ground's softness seems to be uh, giving way right beneath him. Um, All my lucky. feet become sticky on his shell, and I shoot three pseudopods to the nearest wall. Okay. Uh, okay, you manage, you do so, and kind of start helping him slowly lower himself down so that he doesn't drop. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, I could be a wrecking ball. I just hope I don't go the right way instead of the left way. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm 600 pounds of pure mass. Let's rock and roll. Death. That's what I'm worried about. All right. As uh, as uh, Tun Tun kind of leads the way, um, going forward, uh, with Melvin easily floating in, no issue, and Dutes kind of right behind, slowly kind of sliding down behind um, Tun Tun, um, kind of grabbing onto him, um, while Dutes is getting uh, something at the store real quick. Um, as you lot find yourself slowly making your way down the tunnel, you start to hear the singing. And the smacking again. But now the screams can be heard. And it is starting to get louder and louder the deeper you go. The tunnels themselves somewhat widening and getting more structurally designed. The walls looking as if they are starting to become carved the closer, the further down you get. Um, 
poor, proper support set up after a while. Finally, normal uh, stairs and a little side slide to go down, um, making it easier for Tun Tun uh, and the rest of the party to get your feet uh, underneath you as you find yourselves at the bottom of the first tunnel, seeing a fork in the tunnel to the right and open up of a large, glowing, gorgeous city that seems to sparkle from the platinum uh, that it has been carved out of. Creatures of all sorts and shapes and sizes that you've never seen before walking about. Um, some having conversations in languages that are foreign to each of you. Um, some seeming to have casual conversations and common about the day's weather. Uh, you see Illithid walking about, working on um, d different devices as they pass by these tunnels. Uh, some seem to take notice as they look to you lot, but seem to continue on about their way into the si or back into the city. To the left, you see a darkened hole with the occasional blue lights uh, sparkling up from the walls, uh, assumedly from the mine or from the ore itself. Uh, looking down, you can hear at this point just a slight, the slight faint screams and such coming from that direction. The beat, the smacking of what sounds like metal or glass um, from some sort of device, as well as that strange singing that seems to keep changing tune, almost as if it doesn't seem to understand how to keep a tune more than a few seconds. To the left. That. The friendly being up there was very specific about going to the left, so uh, I think we should go that way. <laughs> I start controlling pseudopods to get us that way. All right, yeah. Start kind of help making sure that there's no areas where Tun Tun's going to slip again watching for it. Um, you all come to the bottom of the, ton or the, the fork and look to the left and start climbing now upwards once more. Um, Slightly seems to dip up for a moment, then back down. With Tun Tun leading the front, the pseudo or with the Gygax on his back, uh, I assume followed by Melvin and then Dutes at the very back, watching everyone, uh, watching the the end of the or the back of the area. Um, as you lot kind of come into the tunnel, you suddenly see as it opens up to this massive, shimmering with gemstones, bright crystals of blue, red, and blackened um, glass-like metals that seem to stick out of the walls. Um, and as you look about, you see groups of what look to be dead creatures that are, at this point, so torn up and devastated that it's almost hard to identify them from a first appearance. Um, as you uh, look around, you see mining equipment like uh, pickaxes, some very basic uh, adventuring gear um, that looks to have been set aside, some rations uh, set in a big crate off to one area, uh, but no trolls walking around. In fact, no other creatures seem to be walking around this part of the, or this entrance section to the mine. As you see, about four tunnels uh, all going off in different, or uh, off in front of you. Um, basically left to right uh, on the other side of the room. And we'll have uh, Benny the Bat fly out down, uh, I guess, the left tunnel. Okay. Uh, you see the little, the little bat kind of pops off, uh, off of uh, Melvin's back and seems to just start taking off at top speed down one of the tunnels. Um... Now, I believe that... So, he uh, he's your familiar, correct, Melvin? Yes. So, you can sense what's going on around him, but you don't... I don't remember if you get to use his senses. Um, do remind me. Oh. Because I know you're a wizard, so... For your familiar. Yep. I get off of Tonton's shell. I should have pulled the SRD up before we started, but uh, here we are. You're good. Uh, yeah, as you climb off the shell, no issues. I can sense heat, light, and vibration. Okay. Um, let's have you go ahead and just do a search check then, uh, uh, Gygex, while, uh, this is good, while Melvin's looking up his bat's information. Um, let's check out something. Okay, so I was right. Okay, so it is uh, empathetic for so it's emotional. Um, yeah, so you aren't able to see through the bat uh, through your bat's eyes, but when uh, but you'd be able to sense any emotions of like fear or surprise or anything of the sort. Okay. Why? Why? Okay, wait. Is this not working now? My roll thing. No, it is. I just did it wrong. That's just my fault. Did you? 
There we go. So there you go. Okay. Thank you. Oh. Um, I rolled as well just to see if it what was going on on my end, see if something was wrong. Uh, anyways, um, all right. Yeah, Melvin, as you send your bat out, um, Gygax, you start kind of trying to listen, trying to spot, trying to smell anything or search for anything that would catch your attention. You don't, you feel a slight vibration still in the ground coming from all four of the tunnels, uh, different directions. Um, but you don't feel anything in the room. Uh, the, as you look around for like heat or to sense heat, you notice that the bodies on the air in this area are still slightly warm. Um, but, uh, they don't seem to give off any movement or vibrations themselves. This room seems to be, uh, other than your party members, seems to almost be clear of any sort of, um, living or moving creatures. And do I hear anything uh, coming yeah. from any direction? Yeah, give me a listen check real quick. Well, All right. And Benny gives me a plus three as well. Yep. Fifteen. Fifteen. You um, start listening as you see Gygax kind of looking about. Um, you nice. Um, as you do look about for a moment. That's in that twenty. Is it, and that's for. Listen. Okay, gotcha. Um, as the two of you begin to listen, um, Melvin, you hear the singing, and it starts to pick up. Gygax, hearing the singing, seems to start to get louder and louder for a moment. And then starts to again mellow back out for a moment, uh, as you start to hear the sounds of clashing weapons. Both of you do uh, the bat coming out, and Gygax, you pick up that the second or the second tunnel to the left seems to have the sounds of you, what you figure out almost immediately to be about six, maybe eight enemies in that tunnel. Um, while kind of listening about, uh, you and ne or you and Melvin can both tell that the tunnel on the farthest right seems to only have maybe one to two enemies, roughly, uh, from what you gather. Uh, Melvin, you only hear the ones on the right, though. Um, the bat comes through, uh, comes back a few moments later, uh, and seems to or, and begins to or reports back to you, uh, Melvin, saying that he uh, didn't or letting you know that it didn't see anything. Oh. I would uh, also let the information be known to the group. Okay. Then I tell Melvin, left eight, right one or two. As Melvin kind of turns and tells the party that once more, uh, you all look about. Um, you've got the, the four tunnels. You've got the pile of corpses, um, the oars in the walls. What are we thinking? I want to lick the ore. Okay. All right. I'm at. Yeah. Let's do that. Okay. Um. Well, you you said what am I thinking? I'm thinking. I want to lick. Oh, the okay. I would, I would like to see if I can like sneak up to the the right tunnel where there's a couple and see if what I can see. Uh, yeah. Go ahead and give me a hide check as you kind of uh float over there. I'll give you uh let's say a plus two to it um for uh since you're floating. Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Yeah, you you kind of calmly find yourself. Uh, um, here, let's say. Yeah, you find yourself uh, looking, kind of uh, slowly moving uh, quietly over to the tunnel on the right, and as you kind of peer one of your tentacled eyes down to look down at, not moving your whole body. Um, the rest of you see this, and as uh, Melvin kind of pulls back, uh, Melvin, you see uh, one of the morph trolls uh, poking at what looks to be some sort of dead creature with a, like a club or a stick. Uh, the other one seems to be just like chewing on something um, in the back, or a few feet behind it. Um, this narrow tunnel looks like it's narrow enough that these creatures don't seem to be able to stand next to each other, like shoulder to shoulder. It'd be one at a time coming out. How tall are these creatures? Um, they are... Uh, let me pull up their exact measurements. Uh, so they can be noted to come anywhere between two to five feet tall. These specific trolls seem to be around like th roughly three and a half feet um, from what you can tell. Uh, but they're now, very fat as far as their like bellies go. So they're kind of wide is the idea. 
Is the are the tunnels going to be too narrow for us to go multiples at a time? Uh, as you're looking down, you're pretty sure that you could fit more than one person going. Mostly on just row. worried about Tauntaun, but uh, you're right to be concerned. Tauntaun, you're you're uh, still considered medium, right? Yeah, I'm only I I made my measurements, so I'm only like I'm like four feet across and five feet from like. Yeah head to tail and like six feet from foot to my very top yeah melvin as you look down the tongue you're pretty you're almost 100 percent sure that your party could get down at one a, one a time in a row or you could uh try and lure the creatures to come out okay um i will uh go ahead. give them all that information to... Just uh, letting you guys know only one can come at us at a time it's kind of narrow there we should be okay but if, uh... I can lure them out. Yeah, we might want to figure out our plan before we we enact, but uh, I don't know what you all are thinking. Uh, tun tun, tun tun uh, utters this. Um, Dutes kind of looks like he's looking at the body. He's kind of looking about to see if there's any clues or any markings to catch your guys uh, to note. Uh, as you lo are looking about and uh, thinking and prepping, uh, I'm giving Dutes a second here because he's uh, uh had to step away for a minute. Um, what what? Do you all want to investigate the area, or are you just think are you gonna thinking you're gonna try and lure this creature out immediately, these creatures out immediately, or are we thinking of doing something else here? Hmm. So left tunnel has eight, right mm -hmm. tunnel has two, and the two tunnels in front of us are it empty. Didn't seem to have anything, yeah. Melvin, whatever you say, I'll do. Uh, Dutes turns to you a lot as uh, Gygax mentioned this and goes, uh, letting them out one at a time might be a better bet. Coming up with some way to maybe stop the second one from coming out at the same time might be something to help give us the advantage as he kind of points I can do out. that. I can keep the second one busy. you kind of say this uh uh dudes looks like he's st kind of stands up and looks at the rest of the party waiting to see what the rest of you uh, say maybe you confirm so uh we're gonna just let them come through one at a time you guys this is me asking you as players of course ton ton can't actually speak yeah that's what sounds like the plan all right uh hard copy uh, Tun Tun will start letting off the songs of his people. The shouting of Tun Tun. Um, yeah, let's uh, roll up initiative, everyone. Let's see what you got. All right. Uh, while you start to roll initiative for a moment, I'm going to grab something. Uh, we're going to take a second and let dudes pop in. Uh, so if anybody needs to run to the restroom, take a second. Uh, this is the minute you got. All right, before we start combat here. Uh I will mention, normally, for those who are watching, and for Gygax, since you're new, normally it's not this chaotic, but we have, with the current situation uh, of cult, or of uh, Dutes drop, had to go do something real quick. We want to give him a second. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so, feel free to roll up initiative and post it in the chat once you have, and I'll add a, thing, uh, a list. Uh, we got one initiative in the chat. Initiative is dex modifier, right? Uh, you have an initiative. Uh, but it's yes. in your stats. It's also your dex modifier on top of it, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, my sheet just had a plus sign. Um, <laughs> but it didn't have the dex modifier on there. If you don't have a feat that adds to it, it is just your dex. Yeah, it's just your dex. Uh, that's actually strange because my initiative says plus one, whereas my dex is plus two. Yes, because it doesn't auto-add it. You have to add it yourself. Oh... Yeah, that would do it. Seven. Mine's, 
Uh, mine's only a plus one. Well, then mine would be a 21 initiative. Okay. Uh, so, Tun Tun got 21. And then what was yours, Melvin? Seven. Seven. Also, right. I went in to look. I didn't mention anything because it was right before session. So, yeah. when I'm dealing with it, because uh, I have them copy and pasted in the sheet. Uh, but none of the spells, there was only like one of my spells for Melvin that was actually created that uh, I could see. Send me the spells real quick. I'll, uh, I can, I'll send you what their codes are. Okay, cool. Um, cause we got to give dudes a minute anyways. Again, apologies for the stop. I normally will. I'm actually going to pause the recording for those watching. So... Okay, there we go. Welcome back everyone. Uh, some technical difficulties slightly in the background on my end, normally a bit more organized, but again, this, uh, first time we're back, uh, I thought I had done some work that I had forgotten, so, on the DM's bad, thank you for the players for being patient. Um, as you lot, uh, now enter into combat, uh, rolling up initiative with, uh, Gygex stand, er, being, being right behind Melvin, Melvin standing at the entrance, um, Gygax, did you want to get that movement off beforehand, was you wanted to get yourself up on the, um, or above the uh, the entrance. I wanted to be above the entrance okay. as the combat starts. Okay. Um, you all will have, do have a surprise round, so I'm just going to kind of go down then to see where you guys want to be for, uh, like, where you want to start before you uh, signal them. Um, Tun Tun, I know you're doing your singing. Were you going to be moving at all, or are you going to stay in the center of the room? Uh, I intended to, you know, be in a, yeah, pretty much in the center. I want them to come at me. Okay. All right. Uh, staying at the center of the room. You've got about... 20 feet from you to the uh, the uh, to the entrance to that side. Well, actually, if that's ca well, if that's the case, um, I'll move 10 feet forward. Okay, giving a little bit of mo uh, movement or uh, width between you and the tunnel. All right, yeah, you move up 10 feet, kind of clobbering over the bodies, crushing and the squishingness of the wet or uh, the of the bodies crushing under your feet uh, as you walk towards. Uh, Melvin, how about yourself? Um, are they? Do they look like they are melee-based enemies? Like they're uh, gonna try to hit me? They look like, well. One of them did have some sort of club or something, or like stick that they were like messing or beating or uh, smacking with um, earlier. So when you looked around the uh, the cave, um, you so you, uh, it's a pretty safe guess that these creatures look to be some sort of uh, physical fighters. You didn't see any showing of them using magic. Okay, I'm going to fly up to the top of the the room mm -hmm. or whatever it is to the ceiling okay um and then kind of back a little ways from the door okay so backing up another 20 feet you find yourself kind of at the back of the uh the um the or the open uh, open room back towards the entrance that you wa uh, came through uh floating at the very top you are uh, you think you're going to be out you assume you'll be out of their reach as you wait um dudes how about yourself um, if I climb onto the back of Tantan, would I still be able to hit the enemy? Yes. Then I will do just that. Okay. Alright, um, Tantan, are you cool with him climbing on top of your back? Yeah, I'm vibing with it. Okay. Uh, as you climb on, um, give me, let's say, a dex check just to see how, uh, comfortable you are on his back. Alright. Because there's no acrobatics in this era. Net 20 for 23. Oh, yeah, easily. You climb on almost as if it's second nature. Um, you, uh, with the swing of Tun Tun, as you get comfortable, you prepare. Tun Tun lets out his utter growl, or uh, his uh, battle cry, uh, and the two trolls come charging. Um, the first two, uh, you see, uh, immediately seeing Tun Tun, that the first one with the stick in his hand drops it and just starts charging towards the cave entrance. Uh, but as it's not his turn, uh, Tun Tun, you are up first. Okay, so he's at the mouth of the cave, yeah? Uh, he's still at the back of the cave. He's going to start charging forward on his turn. Gotcha. I don't think it would be a good idea for me to block the area because then the other people wouldn't be able to attack. So I'll actually stay at my 10, at this 10 foot okay. um, distance between here and the mouth. 
Okay. Are you planning to ready an action or hold your action? Until yeah, the I'm gonna hit? I'm gonna hold my action till one of the trolls is in my range. Okay. Um. All right, Gygax, you are up. Give you a second. Uh, if you if you got a mouthful of pizza, um, as uh, you look down. Sorry, uh, yeah, no. I had my mic muted. Um, oh, okay. I'm holding my mic. I'm holding my action until the second troll is just about to step out of the cave. Okay. All right. Um, then yeah, as uh, both of you begin to prep, uh, watching and waiting, the first troll comes charging forward. He is going to use his full movement. Uh, and the, with the way it, the held action works, that'll put you lot as technically with Gygax going there, and then I'm just fixing the initiative. As uh, the troll runs forward, you see that he readies to attack Tun Tun, seeing that Tun Tun is the first threat. Uh, the creature seems to um, charge up immediately, and as he gets to the mouth of the cave, uh, Tun Tun, your action starts off with uh, the held. So go ahead and take your turn. All right, um, I will start off with my bite attack. Okay, let's see what you got. As he, as this morph troll runs forward into the fray, right into you, um, you bite onto him. Uh, at your height, you're gonna be uh, roughly uh, biting into his stomach. Uh, from if that, if you're doing called shot, but no, nah, I no need to call shot right now. At least um, that'll be a natural twenty to hit. Uh, go ahead and roll again to see if you crit. Uh, of course. Uh, no. Okay. A mere uh, 17. Yeah. All right, but yes, uh, crit to hit. Uh, yeah, so 20, uh, that hits. Uh, the AC of the creature e are sma uh, biting onto the goblin with ease, grabbing onto its belly. Um, go ahead and roll your damage. Yes. I hate that I don't have a, uh, I didn't make a thing for my bite roll, so uh, give me it, one second while... It's 1d6, mate, uh, plus your strength modifier. Uh, it was a d6 plus 6 that you gave me. Yeah. Oh, well, I think I gave you that because of the flat Zoraton thing, but yeah, that worked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let me just, like, pull up, like, a... Actually, wait, no, hold on. There's a roller in Discord to use. Oh, actually, wait, hold up. What was the second roll you rolled uh, for the... Tw that wasn't the uh, the second tw uh, d20? Um, the second one I rolled wasn't a D, an actual yeah. 20. What, what was it? Uh, it was a 17. Oh, no, that does, you do crit. Um, so, uh, that is going to count as an actual crit. Cause, so, critting in 3.5, thank you, Chaston, um, is, uh, basically when you go to roll the second time, you just have to, you're trying to beat their AC, and that counts as a crit. So, if this creature has oh. a lower F AC than your second roll, you don't have to roll a second natural 20. That's the nice thing about 3.5. Okay, cause... Uh I, I, cause I mean, I rolled like, it was a flat 17. It was a 21 overall. Yeah. No, you're good. Okay, um, cool. Give me a second. My apologies. I didn't know that's how crit, crits, uh, worked after the initial natural 20. Yeah. Um, it's a nice little thing. So, um, as, well, we're not going to bother with an injury table in this one cause you're going to be biting down this creature. We're going to have you roll it. Uh, so give me a, just a, uh, another D20 roll to see which body part you're going to be hitting specifically for this, uh, for the crit. Uh, yeah, of course. Um, that would be a 14 on that roll. If you want me to add the modifier, I can, no, but. No. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, so cool. as you bite down onto, uh, grabbing onto the morph troll's arm, uh, go ahead and roll its double dice correct for crits. I believe it, it's double if you don't have a thing that specifies it's higher like because yes. some weapons are yeah because so, mine's just a bite attack yep yeah, so double what you get you can either double the die or double what you roll i'll double what i roll mm. roll 1d6 plus your six then uh, how is it so it's slash roll 1d6 plus six well there'll have to be a space just uh between the roll and the 1d6 D so. six, and then it's space plus six. Yeah. Oh no, no, no. So like this. no space for the. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'll take doubling the damage. That fucking uh, you rolled a six. Okay, so yeah, you do. You, yeah. You go for twelve, or you bite onto it, tearing this creature's arm off. 
Um, the uh, morph troll seems to manage to hold on, bear screeching out in this bellow, uh, uh, alerting other creatures all around the area as it screams in pain, blood spurting onto the ground. Um, the creature seems to be freaking out as you've bitten down onto it. Mm -hmm. uh, since I'm not moving, can I attack again? Um, yeah, so still, uh, it's still going to stand by a rule, I believe is what we decided, dude. Again, my rules will air in the background. Chastin, was that the agreement? I believe that was the agreement. I just don't know how you want to run it for a held attack action. I'll deal with that later. Uh, yes, I'm going to say for, uh, if, you, if you're not using uh, your movement, yes, you can use the second action instead. All right, cool, cool. Then off we go with another bite. Um, a 10 to hit. A 10 does not hit as you bite on, try to bite the Morph tro Troll. Now it very warily looking at you and s with fear in its eyes kind of jumps, bounces back slightly um, in fear almost as you try to bite it again. <laughs> dun, dun. A little blood, uh, covered in blood as you say this. <laughs> Splattered uh, all over my turtle beak. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, the Morph Troll, uh, or, uh, is there anything else you'd like to do, Tun Tun? Uh... Uh, no, that would be it. All right. Uh, the morph troll having been uh, having its arm ripped off. Uh, the creature kind of looking at each of you, uh, seeing all looking at right in front of you, and then seeing that there's no creatures off to the side. It just turns and starts running. Um, you will get an attack of opportunity, Tun Tun. Um, oh, fantastic! And Dutes, you will also be getting an attack of opportunity. It was just about. <laughs> yep. Because <Oof. laughs> you're standing on top uh, of it as well. That will be a natural one. Ooh. Uh, roll another nat twenty or another d twenty for me. Not a natural one. Okay, you're fine then. That's uh, an eight. Yeah, as you both uh, <laughs> go to swing, it almost kind of shocked that this creature's still alive, and the utter like look of this thing as it's like the blood it is bleeding out actively. I have blood in my eye. The creature just kind of like runs as you two try to swing at Baya. It jumps out of the way in fear and starts running towards the exit. It makes it another five feet um, as it's until it run before it runs out of movement. <laughs> I'm gonna be uh, just chewing a little bit. Okay. Um. It is uh, not going to use its action to attack. It is instead going to double its movement, and it is going to get right up to the exit uh, tunnel that you had come out, or you guys had come into the room into earlier, uh, as it has not noticed Melvin yet uh, floating above. Um, <laughs> it's going to end its turn. Uh, Gygax. Uh, as you, or as, uh, as soon as this troll kind of starts running, uh, with the reaction looking down watching, you see the second troll come running, is starting to come running out as, uh, your, at your turn picks up, so what would you like to do? I am going to do a sneak attack pseudopod attack. Okay. So, that is going to be for the attack. I got a 17 to hit on the attack. The 17 hits. All right. And then... All right. And there's damage. All right. Uh, as you come up from behind... Oh, uh, I feel, I feel oh, bad for the double ones. Uh, yeah, as you, yeah, that sucked. Uh, as you drop down, the mo it's finally your moment, uh, Gygax. You're thinking you're going to get to show this new group for a moment everything uh, that you have shown Melvin and you know really uh, spark off what you can do to the rest of these, uh, these adventures and monsters. And as you get excited to show this, you kind of drop down, and as you're about to like bite or attack on and bite on, um, the creature seems to somewhat look up, and as you get down and clamp down onto the creature attacking it uh, from behind, it freaks out and slightly jumps, uh, making the blow go a little bit slightly, uh, slightly less deep than you expected. Watching the blood just only trickle out a bit, the creature turns and looks at you, <laughs> a little freaked out. Uh, but you're on the ground; you have its attention, and its back is turned to um, Tun Tun. Uh, and or, and Dutes looking at you instead. 
Uh, I have my pseudopod did not let go. I'm still stuck to him. Oh, that's right. You're, oh, so it turns around expecting you to be there as you bounce back right back up, <laughs> not just uh, where, and it looks around confused, wondering where uh, you uh, are. Uh, uh, I am. I am grappling it now. All right, you want to roll for grapple? Let's see what you got. <laughs> what do you want me to roll? A d20? Um, yeah, let's say a d20 plus your strength modifier. Plus grapple, right? Yeah, well, yeah, that's grapple. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's right, because grapple has its own thing in 3.5. Never mind about the strength thing. Uh, yeah, you manage to tangle the creature up as it tries to pull you off for a moment. Uh, the creature cannot seem to get away as it tries to break the grapple. Um, you got it wrapped up. All right. Uh, that yeah, is. That was with a plus fifteen. Jesus. Uh, that's uh, the two actions. Uh, you uh, instead of movement, anything else you'd like to do? Nope. Okay. All right. As you kind of uh, are now there, he's uh, the creature is going or the morph troll is going to try and break your grapple. I'm just going to roll here because my dice aren't working aren't doing great tonight. He'll have to do a counter grapple against me. Yep. Oh, and what? Oh, because I didn't spell that right. The apple was that man's arm. It was until just a moment ago. Uh, so that'll be a twenty-five if you want to roll to try and maintain, uh, Gygax. Uh, he as he pulls and breaks away, uh, the creature manages to uh, pull you off of it. Uh, now looking up at you, um, it's going to try and make an attack, but uh, due to the fact that you're out of its reach and it only has five at reach, um, I'm gonna roll it with a minus four to see if it can hit. Uh, as this creature, or as the morph troll is trying to jump up at you and smack you uh, down, uh, does a two hit Gygax? <laughs> <laughs> nope. Yeah, That's a want, negative two. Yeah, it is a negative two. And it tries to like gr like swing up at you with its claws. Uh, it seems to like tr be confused. Um, it's used its action for the grapple, so it's uh in its movement. Uh, so that's its movement and its action, or its action and its action. It is uh, finishes its turn. Um, still trying to like grapple, like throw its claws up at uh, Gygax as best it can. Uh, as it continuously tries to struggle, Melvin, you are up. You see down below to your right a. Um, one of the morph troll, the morph troll from earlier that had its arm torn off by Tun Tun, panicking yet to have noticed you and staring at the exit to get out of here. Um, and then about 30-ish feet in front of you, let's say, tw well, 20-ish feet in front of you, I'd say, um, is the, uh, troll, uh, the other troll that looks less injured and is trying to, like, smack at Gygax, um, like, desperately. All right. <clears throat> well, uh... Uh, up being up high, am I within twenty five feet of the the one trying to get out? Yes, he's uh yeah the the cables don't go that high. Okay, um, so then Melvin's going to wave his quarter staff. Okay. And um, if this thing has four hit die or fewer, it loses its next actions. <laughs> All right, yeah, as you do, uh, the creature uh, suddenly feels almost, it looks like it starts to pale it, as if it's been drained. It's a daze in its head, yeah. Yeah, um, and stops uh, moving. Uh, that's, that's a, right, is that not a fortitude save? Is it just a, oh, it's because it's of the hit die. Yeah. Yep. All right, yeah. Um, all right, as you cast daze, the creature seems to stay yep. there. Um, you haven't moved yet. Do you want to use a second action, or do you want to use a movement? Uh... Okay, since it's day is, I'm just gonna try to bonk it in the head with the quarter staff. Yeah, float um, back down towards it and smack it in the head. Yeah, float back down. Okay. All up. Uh, yeah, let's. Uh, let's um, that. sixteen. Uh, sixteen barely hits. Um, go ahead and uh, roll up your damage. Uh, four bludgeoning, right upside the head. Uh, you watch as you kind of slowly, lightly float down, taking out the core, uh, the st core staff, and ram, uh, swing at as hard as you can. You all hear like a like a baseball hitting a wooden bat that crack, uh, as the troll just kind of falls over dead. 
uh, a nice big, a long, lengthy, uh, like pull mark on the side of its head, oh, kind of impl or pushed in a good bit. Uh, the creature lies dead, though, uh, as you finish it off, Melvin. Uh, does that end your turn? Uh, yep, that'll end my turn. Okay. As you uh, uh, all hear this sound, Dutes, uh, you kind of, now undistracted, you see this troll jumping up and down its back towards you, swinging its um, delectable ass in front of Tun Tun's face, uh, if you will. Uh, it's my next meal. <laughs> uh, what would you like to do, Dutes? Uh, I'm going to smack it with my quarter staff. Oh, okay. Second staff of the night. Yep. Because how far away is this uh, creature from me right now? Uh, about five feet in front of you. Oh, As okay, I cool. drool above it, wanting to eat it. Yeah, and it continues to try and swing at him. A 17? Yeah. Yeah, that hits. Uh, the creature seems completely distracted um, as you smack it in the back. Or you slash at its back. Or no, smack, yeah. Quarter stuff. Five damage. Five damage. Yeah, as you s club into the creature's back, uh, it kinda like bat like you hear a kind of a slight cracking as it kind of pushes its stomach almost unnaturally slightly forward. You see the, the creature kind of slightly leaning back a little bit, uh, its, shoulder, or its chest like pushed out unnaturally now from the, the hit. And... Almost undeterred, it continues to like claw up at Gygax uh, as it's now got this strange-looking posture. As it, every time it drops down on the ground, it kind of wobbles a little bit, but still manages to maintain. So I'm not gonna move. Mm -hmm. Um, and I need to verify. Cantrips count as an action now in 3.5. Correct. Okay. If I'm pretty I... sure they're an action in 5e as well, though. Okay. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. If I cast Prestidigitation and make his ass smell like pastries, nah. <laughs> could that give Tun Tun advantage? He, I Maybe mean, a bonus to hit, I don't know. The creature's not you even paying attention to you, so uh, Tun Tun's already going to have a, a, a natural bonus to his hit, just like you did. Uh, but the yeah. creature's dex is going to be disadvantaged to him. Yeah, um, so, I mean, if you want to, yeah, you can. It'll just make it, uh, I'll give Tun Tun a, a higher advantage for it. Oh my god. If that, if you want to waste the spell, I, you know what, I'm fully down for it, man. If that's the, the plan, fully, let's, let's go. This fucker's hiding pastries in his ass, so I'm gonna find him. Is that what we're doing, uh, dudes? I'll, I'll do it. I'll just... <laughs> I'm changing this episode's name to Pastry Ass. Um, <laughs> all right, yeah. Tun Tun and the Ass Pastries. Uh, the troll doesn't even notice. Uh, it seems completely distracted as you cast. Uh, and Tun Tun. Um, the eyes the, dilate. The sudden smell. You. This creature's hiding sugar in, in its body. You're not sure where, but it's right in front of you. Fall, you feel the drive to follow your nose, Ass. <laughs> The, her, the the very ugly, morphed, and malformed-looking runt troll uh, continues to try and <laughs> grab up at Gygax uh, while he's drooling down at him. <laughs> All right. Uh, I feel, almost feel bad for this creature. <laughs> You're not totally bullying it. Um, back up to the or, uh, dudes. Is there anything else you'd like to do? Um, seeing as that would have counted as my movement action. Um... No. Okay. Tun Tun, do I smell pastries? Um. <laughs> God damn it. That, no, don't make that the group name. No. No. That's the not pastry real. boys. We're not, we're not making the pastry adventure. The, pa the pastry adventures. The fucking uh, name of this campaign. I swear to God. Um. Anyway, Here right. comes the pastry team. God damn it. I'm not getting art okay. for that. There's no way to, uh, Tadas is doing make like Mike. Uh, Tun Tun, you're up. I am hungry, Royce. I am so hungry. <laughs> and the smell of pastries are right in front of you. I'm going to eat this man's ass. <laughs> I'm going to throw a bite of ass. Well, it's after the first five minutes. We're fine. You two won't care. Go ahead. Let's roll to eat the ass of the troll. Pop tarts with ass. All right. So, uh, what's the bonus you're gonna give to for this? Uh, a plus five. To your attack. Okay. Okay. Um, so that's a dirty twenty. 
Uh, okay, uh, that does hit, so go ahead and roll off damage. All right, I'll we've do always it. been rated R. There's nothing about my world that's not rated R. <laughs> it's just you, there, it's rated R for serious, like like Bloodborne uh, concept. No, the reason we get rated R on the D, uh, on YouTube is because my parties are just fucking trolls. <laughs> All right, uh, not uh, fucking trolls. Like it's eating trolls. Go ahead. So eight damage for the first bite. All right, you bite down hard onto this troll. Uh, you hear it screech out as you pull off a cheek. It is screaming bloody murder up at Gygax as it suddenly realizes it's getting eaten. And uh, t- uh, and I'm not moving. I'm taking another bite. <laughs> I'm, going right. for the other cheek. I'm going for the other cheek. Gygax, I imagine. Uh, so sweat. along with the bonus, that's a 12. Okay. I imagine it's a, l- a little bit uh, jealous at this point watching you eating the troll he was going to eat. Um, yeah, oh, sorry, uh, what was it again? Apologies. Uh, 12. 12 to hit? Or 12 damage? Mm-hmm. Oh, 12 to 12 hit. 12 to hit. Uh, as you bite down, uh, the creature screeching now, realizing what you're doing, pulls its ass forward as it like humps the air hard forward. <laughs> I'm um, trying to avoid, like, the chomping Tom from Tom and Jerry. Tun Tun's eyes dilated, licking his lips. Yeah. The raspberry. <laughs> raspberry flavor. <laughs> Remember, scent plays a big part in how things taste. Roll, roll an intimidation check. Well, I don't think it's going to matter. Uh, let's go, 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 go. Uh, I, yeah, all right, uh, that'll be a 19. A 19? Alright, uh, you, you see fear in the troll's eyes, like, <laughs> this, is, this creature never expected to ever be eaten, and now it's being eaten for the first, this is something that it does, not people do to it. Yeah, it's not like, you know, someone's fighting for their life and killing it, it, this man has realized he is food. Yeah, um, for the first There's time. There's a first for everything. Um, <laughs> The other, uh, as uh, you finish run your turn, the, uh, the dead troll kind of uh, slightly, uh, you know, um, twi- uh, tweaks. Uh, the body kind of jumps a little bit, uh, but doesn't seem to move much more afterwards. Um, Gygax, you're up. Uh, the troll is not looking at you now, which... Where is the troll <laughs> looking? Uh, behind, or it's, it seems to have turned, like, not turned around. Its fa- its body is facing towards the uh, cave, it, uh, the little cave it came out of. Um... But its head is turned around, t- looking backwards behind it at Tuntun and uh, Dutes. Uh, not looking at you in the slightest at this point. I drop on it, mouth open, chomp, go to chomp its head. All right. You know what? Here. It's not expected. I'll give you the plus five as well. Let's see what you got. Let's go. Let's uh, see if you can manage to chomp this thing's head. This is a called shot. And that hits. Um, <laughs> go ahead and roll damage. <laughs> this poor creature just got eaten alive it <laughs> thought it was gonna kill you guys he came out and like, <laughs> yeah it, it, it got its ass eaten and then uh well uh, Col- and as Coltec- that's to remember we need some body to make money off of it uh as ned i'm just says, eating its head yeah as ned says this guy gex drops and with like a big open like almost cartoonish chomp uh you watch as the body just kind of slowly drops to the ground with guy gex kind of riding it down to the ground uh swallowing the head in one go uh the creature lays a dead on the ground and uh, now i can mimic a shocked troll's head <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I, I imagine Gygax would kind of like slightly try and turn into it for a second just to see how it feels and what it looks like just to kind of also to scare the party a little bit. Could imagine Which I do. Just, I'm yeah. also going to eat some of the other troll. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, I, you know, I got some arm, I got some ass. I mean, it's only right if you guys have a little piece. Are you going to, Melvin, are you going to take the other arm on the troll you killed? Yeah. Okay. Um... You, as you all kind of slightly turn with the, uh, just a, not even having to give a search check, you see the other trolls that are kind of stand, like two of the other trolls kind of standing at the entrance to the other cave uh, where the eight were down, looking as if they just watched this whole thing and both <laughs> turn and run at top speed. I'm going to chase. Guys, I'm still hungry. What are you, what about you guys? No. Are there any shadows down the hallway that they're heading, trying to run down? 
Uh, well, Gygax mentioned earlier that there were eight tr uh, eight trolls that you oh, did hear down right. that, um, and didn't hear anything else. But the singing um, has not stopped this entire time while it's been going on. It hasn't gotten louder though either. Uh, so only two of them tried to come yeah. to get us though. The yeah, the two from that tunnel. They seemed to come to the entrance, looked at you guys, and then turned and ran back down the the tunnel. Let's see. What would you hmm. all? You now stand in a um, a room full of corpses, two of which you've added to this room. All right. I have a plan, guys. Of course, I can't tell you my plan because <laughs> I can't communicate with y'all. So, so I'm not going to tell you my plan. Dudes, what's the plan? I'm definitely looking at that other tunnel where those two ran off. And I'm looking at beady lips. eyed. <laughs> Look at my lips and ready for more pastries. They gotta have more. The other tunnel? Yeah, they went. Yeah, they did. Oh, sorry. I asked Tun Tun, do you want to go down the other tunnel? I think Tun -tun. there are a lot of them down there, though. <laughs> as Melvin Shake kind of your comes head. down. Yeah, uh, as Tun Tun shakes his head, Melvin comes down to the group. Sorry. Just nods. I'm not very. I'm a crazy man. Uh, Melvin's muted. Oh. oh, he's back. I'm here. Melvin, do you want to go down the other tunnel? Weren't there a lot of them down there? Eight. I mean, we can. Sounds like potential to be overwhelmed, but that might just be me. Well, to be fair, Guys, let's just think about this. It's a tunnel. Only one or two people can fit at a time, right? Right? You should be fine. Me not saying this because I actually can't communicate with you, of course. How far are the two that started to run back down the tunnel from us? How far? Yeah. Um, you can't see them because of the darkness of the tunnel at this point, uh, unless you have dark vision. Um, I have 60 foot dark vision. Uh, they seem to, uh, after uh, a few moments, seem to go r just out of your range and seem to continue down the tunnel. You you lose them after um, they they make it down about 30, 30 feet into that tunnel directly, or 40 feet into that tunnel directly. Okay. Well, I mean, if we do, we want to uh, move carefully and quietly. Try to take them on one or two at a time rather than eight. Yeah. Probably for the best. But that's really mm -hmm. on you guys, and I'm going to fly up to the top of the hallway, like the ceiling. Yeah. Looking down on them. Okay. Uh, I'm going to kind of just wait for what Dutes thinks we should do. Because I'm ready to go in or call of the day. There's more booty to be had. I mean, pastries. Uh, the ground is starting to slightly rumble while you guys are having this conversation. Um, like, it's starting to feel like it's a little bit of a quake for a moment. Can I try and detect what might be causing the quake? Uh, yeah, give me a search check, and, um, for, and, uh, Gygax, because of your race, uh, oh, also, vibration. yes, also give me, um, that's, uh, you know what, I'm gonna say, let's just go with search or uh, spot, I'll take whichever's higher for you, since, uh, it's kind of hard to do the sense vibration with, uh, those skill checks, my, overall. I got a 15. 15, okay. And then Gygax, oh, you're rolling in the, the thing, so. 14. Um, be, uh, as uh, dudes, you kind of start to put, get down on the ground, put your ear towards it, moving some of the corpses out of the way. Um, and you start to hear the, the sounds of what so, like rumbling foot feet slamming into the ground, um, one after another. You start to kind of count roughly and get a sense of about maybe 14, maybe 20. 
Um, Gygax, with your uh, a bit more superior uh, capabilities with uh, your racial thing, um, your feet start to sen- uh, kind of like s- very being very sensitive to the vibrations. Um, you bring that window down to there's roughly eighteen to maybe twenty five creatures heading uh, this way from that uh, same tunnel you just saw the two morph trolls escape down. Are they running towards us or running away? Towards you. Um, for both dudes and uh, guy next, you'd be able to tell this this group this group is coming towards you and at quite a rapid speed. I think it's best you call it a day. We're about to become a run. I could barely hear you. Sorry about that. Well, let's grab these corpses and get the hell out of here then. All right. Uh, I guess. Tun Tun will grab uh, the one that he ate the booty of, and you know we'll, we'll drag him on out of here. And bites his leg and pulls it. <laughs> yep. Okay. Yeah. And I can right. pseudopod uh, Tun Tun shell and the other dead one, and just hold on for the low climb up. Okay. And dudes, what are you saying? Uh, I was just going to say, like, reiterate so that Coltac could hear me, that, yeah, I think we should probably get out of here before we get overrun. As uh, you kind of all gather up the, the trolls, uh, uh, Gygax grabbing the armless one, dude's kind of watching the back, watching the tunnel eerily, making sure that l- nothing comes or manages to get out. Um, Melvin, uh, I assume you're kind of, are you going to stay at the top of the uh, room until uh, the party is, like, at almost exiting, so that way you can escape without being hit yeah mm-hmm. uh, yeah as you kind of follow in right behind uh with dudes taking up the last dudes as your group starts to turn you see down below a or right be- as you're about to head up the main tunnel um a morph troll is almost three times the size of the ones you just saw coming out dressed in very simple tribal wear like a feather, some like really simple wood and stone piece uh, like of equipment on him, uh, and seems to slam into his belly left and right uh, as it starts pointing and ye- uh, like uh, yelling out in some weird, very pr- uh, primal language. Um, ba- does anybody speak primal? Well, um, primordial. Well, I can understand him. Oh, perfect. Uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, you hear, well, you hear the words char, or charge, uh, basically coming from the troll, uh, as it bellows out, um, dudes, as you are backing up, uh, basically at the mouth of the cave going out back towards, uh, the fork, uh, as soon as you he- see this creature, sh- uh, shout and start yelling and pounding on its chest and stomach, uh, the cave mouth seems to slam shut as, uh, a wall of earth seems to close it up. Well... I'm still moving quickly. <laughs> yeah, you follow up after the party, and uh, you lot find yourselves back at that fork uh, in the road uh, with the two troll corpses. Are you going left to the city uh, that you saw earlier, or are you heading back to the entrance to the cave? As you were not told where to go. Huh. I'm a... We met him at the top. Let's go back to the top. Let me fair. That's a steep climb. Tun Tun looks up and sees where he almost oh. fell. <laughs> if if I make the ground drier, do you think will we Tun Tun be able to have an easier time getting back up? Um, you can do me a knowledge nature check if you have that. Um, if not, that'd be just a let's say a survival check in general. All right, that's a unnatural twenty. Is that knowledge nature or survival? Knowledge nature. Um, looking at the rocks, this is definitely like a, a loose gravel. It's not uh, the fact that the ground is fully wet. It's the fact that the ground isn't very compact um, going down here. Hmm. Is present vegetation able to make things more solid? More solidified? That sounds like a mold earth kind of thing, Doug. Uh, yeah, I would say so. I... I... I'm going to say for now, we're going to say it wouldn't compact. I feel like Mold Earth would be. Uh, but if you find something later that points out otherwise, um, I'm open to discussion. Okay. So, then, yeah. Uh, How far is it to the opening? Uh, it's about a 40 to 50-foot f- climb at a 
a pretty steep angle from what you can tell. Um, I can leave the body here. I can climb up. Probably for the best. Uh, see if you can come in contact with him there and then figure out where we're supposed to deliver these. I can go up with him. It's pretty easy for me. I just rolled a nine for climb. Yeah. Uh, as uh, and Melvin, who floats uh, slightly alongside, I assume. Um, you, uh, Gygax, as you try to start climbing, the gravel kind of falls out from underneath your feet pretty quickly, but you see Melvin just kind of slowly floats his way up pretty comfortably uh, if you want to try and pseudopod onto him. I tried to climb again. <laughs> All right, yeah, as you stubbornly and angrily at this, seeing this, you try, you start, you dig your feet in and start to really pull yourself up one uh, step at a time. Uh, you manage to make it up to the top with Melvin. Um, a little exhausted, because climbing gravel is definitely not easy. Uh, but you manage to pull it off. As you both come to the top, you find yourselves at the entrance to the cave, and nothing there. Zebra, oh, Mr. Right here. Guy. Hello? Zebra. Uh, as Gygax says Zebril, and as uh, Melvin just kind of says Mr. Guy, suddenly the uh, purple, lanky looking dragon reappears. Um, or dragon like Illithid. Um, and he looks at both of you and goes, Oh, I'm so sorry. You lost two of your party members. I, I didn't realize that it was that dangerous of a quest. <laughs> we didn't lose them. We know exactly where they are. They're down there. He turns and look. Oh, oh! <laughs> My apologies. I wasn't sure if those trolls would be too much for you. Um, I was concerned. Um, oh, they were tasty. Yeah, a bunch of us ate some of them. I've never thought to try and eat them. I'll have to keep that in mind. I appreciate that information. Um, I morph into the shocked troll's head. This is what it looked like. It kind of looks at it. You, you can give me a sense of if you want to see if you get a reaction out of him. Uh, but otherwise, his face seems to look almost plain, like dead stone-faced. No, I just morphed back. All right, yeah. As you do, he goes, interesting. You know, I would be very interested in keeping you on as retainers. Not, not to say you'd be stuck here, but to continue doing jobs for me. I think... Your party would be a very great benefit to me, and I think I could be a very great benefactor to you lot uh, for uh, the jobs I might have you all do. Would you be interested in taking up a a semi-retainer-like position here uh, for the time being? I just look at Melvin. Uh, I think we'd be interested, but uh, let me get the other people, and I just, like look in their direction down in the hole and start waving my quarterstaff. Time time will be nodding. I wave back. Uh, he looks down and goes, Hey, here, allow me. And he, you see he kind of waves his hands for a moment. Uh, and two uh, mind flares seem to come out of the side tunnel, and one of them seems to start to increase his size almost unnaturally, expanding his body, and then picks up Tun Tun off the ground and starts walking up the steep incline with him, and the body's on its uh, shoulder. Um, the other seems to kind of walk up to Dutes and cr almost bride carry, uh, cradle carry him up uh, and grab him and pull and bring him up to you a uh, lot. Um, a few. Okay this. <laughs> this, is, um... this is quite an interesting carry. The, Quite strong. Uh, the mind flare just kind of looks down at you, and you you don't know if this creature's smiling at you, but it seems to look at you for a moment and then look back forward um, as it continues walking up. Sense a motive. Yeah, feel free. I got a tan. Um, could he, he could uh, he could he could be as much looking at you like you're you were too weak to get up and he feels sad for you or it could have been uh, as much of a romantic interest you don't know anything about mind flares I, regardless i feel extremely safe mm -hmm. you can definitely tell there's no intent for harm um as uh, the two of you are brought up to the top with the bodies they kind of set you down and crawl, climb back down um wait what just happened oh 
Uh, what are you trying to spot? Uh, the uh, li the uh, Mind Flare carrying dudes. Mm -hmm. Did I notice a change of color in the facial area? Um, you, with a 21, yes, you would have noted the colors did slightly fluctuate for a moment. Um, just for a second. Um, give me a moment and I will send you something. Um... Gonna... Uh, there you go. As you look at the, uh, as you notice this creature, um, turning back, uh, Zebral kind of continues on as the two are dropped off. He goes, now that you've all gathered, um, if you may, I would like to hear a confirmation from the entire group, as I only feel it's fair that if you are all are interested, I would be willing to reward you handsomely with exclusive contracts from my own um, nation that you would get the first pick of of uh, whatever you'd like, and maybe some low rank magic items for um, each of you. Um, as you'll be in my service, it would only be fair for you lot to uh, have a chance at survival on this island, which can be quite harsh if you're not careful. I lived on the mountain for a while before people were uh, chasing me out, but I, I would definitely appreciate assistance. Depends on more mod. Um, as long as I get to eat new things, I'll be good. Okay. This seems very beneficial, so I would like to take you up on this offer. Oh, also, do you know anything about mimics? I'm looking for mimics. He goes, you know... If you can bring me any, I'm happy to study them and uh, share my research that I find on them. Um, and if I come across any unique mimics or interesting mimics uh, while I'm doing uh, any of my trading or merchant uh, merchant work, I'll let you know. You'll um, yeah, I'll make sure to introduce you in case there's anything of your interest that might be a, a better suited quest reward in the future. Okay. Also, rumors, stories, tales, maps, things like that. I'm curious about too. Yeah. It goes. Really? Okay. I can... I, I will look into this for you. Um, he kinda, if he could smile, he would. Um, however, the tentacles seem to only slightly move to the side, uh, and a little bit more of a uh, violet color comes off of the creature uh, to show somewhat uh, what you assume to be a slight happiness to it. Um, he looks at the rest of you and goes, Now, I see you've killed two of these trolls. There are quite a few more down there. Um, I'd be willing to pay you in uh, low r the low-ranking magic items, as we said, to complete to finish the rest of the quest. Or um, if you'd be interested in other work, I have other jobs that I'm always uh, looking for um, people to take on. As he kind of snaps his fingers, and you see too the mind flare. Uh, the mind flare takes the two troll bodies, or the larger mind flare that had taken Tuntun takes the two uh, mind or two uh, trolls back with it. Back down into the uh, city. The one and a half trolls. Well, technically, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, uh, given the amount of body parts, yeah, the missing. That's that's accurate. <laughs> I. What do you have to offer, specifically for payment? I I can provide uh, low ranking items um, pretty easily. My people are quite. Um, well versed in uh, crafting, if you will, uh, as he takes a second and goes, um, if you're looking for something more specific, uh, such as any gear, I can definitely drum up um, something of value that might uh, tickle your fancy. Wow. I look to the party. Is there anything in particular y'all want? Or are you all okay with just gold? I mean, anything that would help me live longer, honest. No, Tonto will nod. I mean, you know, food, items that will do us better than battle. I mean, I'm not sure how good gold is here. Uh, Tonto himself doesn't even really have a sense of currency anyways maybe more of like trading but oh uh should right. we show him the uh the chunk of metal we got 
I think we should show him that and then shiny rock. I look at Melvin and go, I already said what I wanted. I want something new to eat. You always want something new to eat. Yeah. <laughs> he goes, what is this about some metal um, that you uh, mentioned? Anton's hiding it in his flaps. He'll have to get it no, out for you. You have a sack of it, remember? And they put it in the sack and gave it to you. Oh. Wow. Here it is. He looks, I dump it out. He kind of looks at it and goes, That's where that went. And he picks it up. He goes, You all are already paying for yourself by a long shot. He kind of pulls it up to the sky. And you see some light glimmer through it. And you see the gold shining underneath the blackened rock outside that seems to change from that, with that oily um, exterior of, from purple to blue. Um, it almost seems to dissipate as the sunlight hits it and it turns to shining, sparkling gold. Um, and he looks at you a lot and goes, Interesting. So Sir Sparkly has been in, has been eating gold. Okay. He kind of puts that away in a pack and goes, How may I reward you for this? I feel like you have just done me a, fan, a great deed of research and saved me a lot more time than you imagined tracking this down. I feel I should be able to, I should pay you rightfully. I apologize. I don't know much about adventures in the uh, out in the world, as I'm not as familiar with your lot. I'm happy to provide the information to uh, your friend down there, Gygax. Um, for Gygax, you realize you never told this gentleman your name. Um, I'm I'm happy to tell you or uh, ha provide the, any mimic information I have currently. But for the rest of you, what would you want of me? I feel this warrants a great reward. Um, the only thing can read my mind, correct? Uh, you don't know? In-game? Out-of-game? Yes. I'm just gonna be thinking about pastries. Okay. Uh, he kind of, you see the, the, uh, creature turns to you, uh, Tun Tun, and goes, I can definitely see what we can do. I think I have some slaves from some of the other nations that could provide you with, uh, the pastries of their lands for you to try. I'm gonna nod to him. Hell yeah. So, uh, kind of an interesting one to ask, maybe, but, uh, since you're being so generous, I am interested in the magic of fear and, uh, you know, making people terrified so that they don't hurt me. Uh, do you know anything about any fear magic or, I mean, anything that I could learn? You seem like you're a good source for magic, maybe. He looks at you for a moment and goes, I I can definitely search into it and see what I can provide for a moment. I, for fear, he thinks for a second. Uh, you see him kind of tap his chin. I do have a spell book I could provide you with as a, a reward for what you've done today. Um, for you uh, specifically, uh, my dear Melvin. Um, the spell Cause Fear, um, I have a uh, book of it that I liberated um, from a, a colleague of mine. I would definitely be interested in that. He nods and he goes, perfect. Um, I'll have one of my people send, uh, bring it up for you momentarily. Um, Dutes, was it? Is there anything yeah. you would care for for a reward for this? Um... Could you help me get in contact with anyone that would be able to further help me in assisting in altering my appearance freely, further than I already can? Do you want it to be permanent or temporarily? Uh, let's go with a temporary for now. I do know a specialist. However, their magic is... Not something I have studied myself, but quite volatile in its use. Um, if you're interested, I can give you their name um, and the last location I would know of the, where they were, but I don't know if they would be able to help you in the same degree what you're looking for, but they may be a good connection to what you're hoping to get. Uh, I would be very appreciative of this information. He nods and goes... I, pr I will I will do so. Um, I don't have a quest at the moment for you lot. A job, if you will. 
other than the one to go deal with the rest of those morph trolls, which I recommend taking a moment to think on what you want to do to um, deal with those creatures, as they seem to have been more than I thought, as they apparently, as the, what is it that the dragons say? Uh, the trolls fuck like rabbits, um, and mm -hmm. uh, there's uh, quite a few of them that seem to have uh, prolificated themselves. He thinks for a moment. Uh, you can kind of tell that the com uh, common is almost a, not a natural language that comes to this creature, um, as it kind of looks back at you a lot and goes, and so if you would be willing to take the continue with that job, I would be happy to set up a contact for you lot to reach out in case you need anything or you do complete quests while well, because uh, I may be quite busy at the time uh, when you do finish your things and I would not like you to have to wait to be paid or anything of such uh, I believe yes we would be interested um he goes okay I will make sure to have someone uh, sent up for you moment uh, momentarily to act as a representative to work with you. Uh, as for your um, rewards, as you kind of see a, uh, another mind flare comes up, and uh, he pulls out a uh, small book uh, that just reads uh, Mimic uh, History on it uh, and hands it to Gygax. Gygax, as you start flipping through it, uh, it's the basic stuff oh, of what you... you. Uh, you kind of already know about mimics in this world of being like used as pets or people who uh, seem to specify or specifically go out and hunt these creatures. Um, but as you notice on the back of it, it's uh, it, looking through it. You notice it is an auto, it is a magic book that seems to update as more information is publicized. Um, and he looks at Ooh. you and goes, "Anything you may find, feel free to write in this book, or anything that is discovered, we'll update for you and should help." Um, Though I can't promise it will give you the information you're looking for, um, it'll help. It definitely will allow you to uh, track any information that's been discovered if you are looking for. Um, I recommend looking at the page marked with the city of the gold um, for if you have an interest in uh, larger and unique mimics. Um, okay, thank you. He smiles at that and kind of looks over. Uh, he then hands a uh, a small uh, or a spell scroll over to you, Melvin, as well as a, uh, a an empty spell book um, that just you know seems to be completely empty for you to use as a wizard. Um, and he goes, "This cause fear should um, assist you in your uh, day to day for your spells. I can't promise it will be a life changer, but as I study into the school more often, I will make sure." To send, or I'll send them your way, or let you know I have them available. Um, I appreciate that. I uh, very much enjoy seeing the look in people's face when they uh, are fear. He kind of smiles at that and goes, "I do too." Um, as he looks to dudes and goes, "As promised," and he hands you a card and. On there, it reads um, the word House Venkos, um, leaders and innovators of disguise magic. All right. <clears throat> um, and he looks at that, it looks to you dudes and goes, if you have an interest in disguising yourself, I, rec I cannot recommend enough the Snow Dwarves. Um, their noble family is known for creating spells of legend to use to change uh, entire genders um, as for t whether temporary or permanent um, if I was to start somewhere I would study their magic and what they've learned through the years which thank you and that's the name of the kingdom on the map if you want to look at the nation map <laughs> yeah no worries right. um, I just wanted to make sure I knew what you were talking about which one you want to know uh, he looks at you and goes, if you start there, I can't promise you'll get a warm welcome, but I can promise at the very least that uh, it will be what you, you're searching for. Um, thank you. I will make sure to follow up on this. He nods and goes, now, I was prepared to give you much more, and you've truly been great to my hospitality, as he hands a... Uh, um, Gygax, uh, a small bit of what looks to be some sort of weird tentacle monster on a, on a plate with some strange sauce. It's food. Um, hmm. 
uh, as he kind of like hands it off to you as one of his min- or his uh, uh, servants kind of hands it to him and he goes that should suffice while uh, while we discuss um, as I plan to originally pay you more I feel obligated to offer something uh, truly in return to show my gratitude and just show the seriousness that I would like to bring you on as adventurers in this area as there's not a guild even set up in the area um, I would be curious if you would be willing to bring future adventurers this way may potentially um and if uh when maybe you retire i could have you lot running at the adventuring guild up on the surface um as many adventurers may be less likely to take quests from people like myself i, I be- open wide and put the plate and the wiggly and the sauce all in at once and eat it <laughs> uh the plate is uh, slightly crunchy uh, the tentacle is uh, very, very still squirming around a bit. Um, the sauce is quite spicy, but uh, very also is quite sweet as you manage to get it down. Um, and then I mimic it. <laughs> you turn into with the a, squiggling tentacle. You turn into a plate of squiggling tentacled uh, food. Um, mm-hmm. The. Zebra kind of looks at you, like, legitimately stops middle speech to look down at you. And as he kind of looks back over at this, but continues, almost as if, like, for a second of registry. Um, if you're willing to, then I think that would be a fair, something of offer. I'm, I'm of course, willing to negotiate in the further for, for future deals, but let's discuss that at that time. Um, since you've mentioned you're interested, I will, uh, and he hands you a little device, a little crystal, um, dutes, uh, and goes... Any time you want to trade uh, within my city or domain, um, just uh, tap that with a little bit of magic, and it will notify my guards to allow you within my uh, city or to send a uh, merchant out to uh, to you lot to easily do any business that might need be done. Um, I think that if that will uh, suffice, he looks about you lot. Feel free to set up camp while you're here. Um, Stay as you like. Um, I must return to my job. Uh, the quest, uh, the rest of the quest, I will have sent over to you once um, I discuss with my right hand exactly what other issues are going on around the nation that might be applicable to your um, skills currently, as I don't want to overwhelm you with anything yet. Um, but until then, feel free to continue hunting those morph trolls down in the mines as you have. Um, as many as you kill, I will continue to reward for. Um, those trolls will continue to be a pest and will continue to breed while they're down there. Uh, in theory, they'll run out of food one day, but the sooner the better, if you would. Um, and with that, he kind of, with almost like a fancy show, the purple smoke erupts around his feet and he slowly starts to dissipate away from you all, uh, vanishing. Oh, did you always feet. want us to meet you here, or can we go to the city? Uh, as you say that, he vanishes. Um, with uh, dudes having that little gemstone to click to bring a merchant out or to have so- the guards to let you in, you get the sense uh, that uh, this is more uh, you you can request whenever you need something from this city using that gemstone rather than meeting him somewhere. Who has the gemstone? Uh, dudes. I do. Okay. Well, shall we uh, make our way into the city? Okay. Do we need to? I mean, we could just, you know, rest out here. Well, I mean, well, like, like I'm actually saying this because I'm fucking retarded. And I can't speak to these guys. Uh, we um, could. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna lay down. Okay. But Tantan, must I remind you of the, uh, what Balthazar told us before we got here that there is an apex creature in this area. Hmm. At least we'll know we'll be safe inside the town. Tonto will get up. By the way, I completely like zoned out. I've got no idea what you made me, Coltec. Gygax? What's up? No, I, well, I, I made I made guy I made uh, oh. Tonton the backpack and sack that I promised him that I would make him. Oh. Okay. So now he has a backpack on the left of his shell and a sack on the right of his shell and it's not interfering with the vegetation you've got saddlebags that's great uh i can't access them but you know if you guys need to put stuff in there go for it 
Um, as you do so, uh, you lot kind of staying at the edge here. Um, you, as the mention of going into the town, uh, dudes, you see as the, or all of you see as the cave kind of slightly transforms and changes its design, um, and suddenly becomes almost like an ornate, uh, like dwarven design to enter into a grander city. Uh, as you look at, it seems to, um, expand out slightly, uh, ornate designs of illithids drawn into battles and showing their might while also showing their kindness and what all the good deeds they've done for uh, civil the civilizations of the world um you see markings of what looks to be future stuff that doesn't make any sense and things that have happened in the past long forgotten it, it's quite confusing by the designs but um it looks like the welcome wagon has been opened up to you uh your party sweet um I assume you, uh, dudes, you're going to lead the party down, or are you... Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll lead them in. Uh, Listen, as, I'm excited for my pastries that are to come. Yeah, as you start heading into this city, it starts. Uh, you come down, take a fork off to the right, and heading through what originally you saw um, looked to be a illithid city of, like, seeing illithid walking around, slaves of weird creatures walking around. You walk in and see races that many of you recognize, dragons, kobolds, other such creatures, Asimar... Uh, Thrycreen, all living peaceful, happy lives, walking about, doing their business. The city seems very bluster, or boisterous, very loud, people dancing, drinking, having fun. Um, as you look about, there is multiple roads going off to the side, all paved. The cities look to be well, the, the roads look to be well taken care of. The city expands out for miles underground, it looks like. Um, and people just seem to casually, comfortably walk around. None seem to be even phased as you enter into the city. Um, Looking about, uh, you see that there are about four businesses that catch your attention um, immediately in the city, but are you just going straight to the inn, just out of curiosity? Uh, or finding an inn, I should say. I say, yeah, I would like to look for an inn. If we see anything that catches our eye, um, I imagine we'll window shop, you know, with the mass amount of funds we totally have. Uh, I have money. Uh, as you say that, um, you start heading, walking down, um, you see the, uh, the four businesses that pop up are, um, a place called the Thundering Tooth, uh, which you note is selling, um, most, uh, basic, like, smithing equipment, um, so, you know, your armors, your weapons, um, basic, and then your everyday tools, um, I'm just going to add this as we're kind of talking. Uh, a business called The Dancing Mark, which you recognize uh, as you kind of head in the as a semi-in um, slash tavern slash gathering point for a lot of the city. Um, What's it called? I'm at, don't worry, I'm, gonna, I'm writing them all down for you. Okay. Slash tavern. Slash, as I didn't expect you guys to hit the this town uh, me, uh, immediately at this session. Um, and gathering place. Um... The last two places that catch your eyes are um, the businesses called the Ho uh, the Honored Carriage Candy Store, um, which is a from what you guys gather a rations and candy specialized shop, uh, and of course the la a listening knife saddler who works with just general um, substances and magic items uh, creation. Uh, mostly on the lower tier of magic items, as uh, you guys kind of window shop through uh, buy, buy kind of thing. You know, your basic maybe plus one. Uh, you know, uh, it temptate or some items such as like um, a cure light wounds potion sitting on the shelf. Um, some minor enchanted gear that looks to have a pretty high price tag. Um, yeah. Uh, you do notice, each of you, though, that this these business all, too, take two types of currency, uh, regular gold and then what are called colored coins. Um, not likely any of you would know what a colored coin is, uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know. You, that Listen, is I barely know. know what real coins yeah, are. Yeah, you, most of you don't know what, co uh, what most of the currency is, but I should, it is something to note that they do notice uh, that they do take two different cor currency rates um, while you're here. If I ever see any of that colored coin or currency that looks different than anything I've eaten, I want some. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, as you look about, uh, the shops seem to be um, pretty uh, busy, but people seem to be going in and out of them, doing their business. Um, 
the people around seem to yeah be quite friendly but few seem to talk to you a lot um, oh, some bumping into you as you walk down the main roads um, but otherwise nothing else catches your eye in the city uh, out at least outright apparently uh, all right I'll, I'll wave to a few people as we pass by as Just you be kind. as you wave you find it kind of part uh, peculiar no one seems to wave back Hello? Anybody? I have questions about your town, your city, place. Guy Gax, yeah, you walk up to someone and try to get their attention as they look down at you. They seem to look down at you, recognizing you're there. They seem to kind of bend down, pat you on the top of your head for a moment um, with their hand, with their slightly humanoidish looking hand as this thri semi-thrycreen, semi-giant looking creature look, uh, seems to stand in front of you. It stands back up and then just continues walking on, like you didn't even say anything to it. Oh. Weird. People in dungeons treated me that way too sometimes. Uh. If I make. Would I be able to mimic? Or make my face look similar to theirs. Uh, if you have um, a disguiser's kit um, on you, you could do that. Um, Cause there's a disguise, but or you can just try and roll a a, dis a flat disguise. Check. Um. I will say you're gonna be taking a uh, minus two um, to your uh, roll, so. Can okay. I try it? Because I know I normally have to eat something. Mm -hmm. Can I try and see if I can morph into something that would look like them? Um, well, I would say you probably haven't eaten anything of like the mor most of the mortal race or the sentient races at this point. Um, if you have a creature in mind that you're thinking... I just want to make sort of a... Um... A miniature version because i am miniature compared to everyone i'll tell you what i'll let you roll disguise um at a, a, a disadvantage uh, but sure i'll let you roll it uh, if you two want to go for it all right i have a plus nine to my disguise mm -hmm. so um, since you're doing a mini version of it um and you've never turned into the race uh but you would understand the basic concept of like the difference in genders because of being a mimic uh having to like see the difference in the bodies for the creatures that you mimic um, I'd say, yeah, just same thing, minus two, because you're changing your, you're disguising to a race that you don't know, necessarily understand fully. So, ten. Alright. So, I guess to better word it, I'm more or less trying to shape change into one of them. Oh! Oh, okay. Um, yeah, you can full, because, uh, your, your doppelganger thing, I think, allows you to, correct? Yes, I have a plus ten for it. Yeah, uh, right. go ahead and roll. Let's see if you can manage it, then. All right, you All right. said with disadvantage, so the lower roll is uh, twelve, is what well, I rolled. Three point five disadvantage means uh, like a minus two in this situation. Yeah, that's what I. That's why oh, I said okay. instead of a twelve, I said it was a ten. No, 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 no. I already put the minus two in there. Oh, okay. Because I have yeah, a plus cool. five. Perfect. Okay. So before I roll, I just want to make sure because it says I have a plus ten. Do I add that on top of my current modifier, which yes. is a plus nine? Yeah, correct. Okay. So you have a plus nineteen when you're specifically trying to do this. Yeah. Alright. Yeah. 15, Doppelgangers are fucking ridiculous. Um, I got 34. Okay. Yeah, you managed to tra uh, to change your shape up. And are you trying to look like a, a mind flare or are you trying to look like any of the creatures that are walking about? Uh, I'll look people. like um, similar to one of the people nearby. I don't want to go and take the step of being a mind flare because I don't know the consequences. All right, yeah, you take the shape of someone nearby, um, and then suddenly, kind of in your head, you hear, why do you look like me? As I the will... creature turns and walks towards you. Uh, I do apologize. Um, I just wanted to communicate to someone about some questions I had about this town. As me you say that... just recently arrived. As you say this out loud, the creature looks at you confused, uh, as if it can't understand you. I'll say it in my head, then. Well, as you repeat it in your head, it goes, 
Oh, oh, you're a mouth talker. Yes. Oh, oh, you're the adventure. Oh, oh shit! And you see the creature kind of like stand up straight and kind of walk off suddenly, uh, like almost quickly. Like it's cons- uh, like there was a, a little bit of a jump in itself as it says this and run- um, starts moving. Um, I will then relay to the party. Um, while I go back to my normal form, it seems that they don't talk with their mouths more with their thoughts, so try thinking of what you're going to say when you have someone looking at you. I shift back to Mimic. Okay. I nod. Alright, as you guys continue down the main road, um, anything uh, you guys are looking for in particular at this point? Pastries. Okay. About a few minutes of roaming goes by as you lot are kind of looking and watching the people, kind of keeping an eye on things. Um, Tun Tun, you begin to smell as you come by the Honored Carriage Candy Store. You see a large-looking troll-like creature working, working behind the counter, dressed fully, wearing what looks to be like um, very simple leather armor with uh, commoner's clothing over it. Uh, it doesn't quite fit. Uh, it looks like most of the commoner's clothing has stretched and torn. Um, and as you look off to the side, you see candy, you see rations, and then you smell, see what you smell, a fresh set bake of nothing but jellied pastries that are sitting out on the counter cooling um, as some kids come running in and then running out of the candy shop. Um, I'm gonna sip. Is the door big enough for me to go in? Uh, as you out. think this, you watch as the door expands wider to let you uh, let you and your party in. Oh my god! I'm gonna walk in. I need these pastries. Yeah, as the party kind of slowly follows you into this nice, clean in, or um, uh, candy store. The the floor made out of a very simple stone that seems to be almost religiously washed. The shop is almost spotless. Um, it's all kind of creepy with the amount of glimmering it does. Uh, the troll looks over each of you, and then you hear each, in each of your heads, How may I help you today? I have candy, we have rations for adventures, and I have freshly baked pastries that are going for one copper piece uh, for a dozen. Pastries, I'm thinking. That'll be... I hold up a copper piece. The troll looks down and goes, Oh, and you hear in your head, Gygax, you are such a sweet little creature as he takes uh, the copper and, like, hands you a piece of candy. Uh, fully, like, wrapped up in some very colorful paper. I eat the paper and candy and all. Uh, it's slightly chocolatey with a bit of a vanilla center, um, but thankfully, this isn't magic. Um, as you, uh, bite down on it, yeah, it tastes great. Uh, and the, uh, troll kind of looks over at the pastries and goes, uh, who... Uh, and he kind of looks down at Tun Tun and looks back at Gygax and goes, uh, in your head, Gygax, he goes, are they for the giant turtle? Yes. He nods. And he just puts the, the plate right in front of Tun Tun on the floor so he can eat and then puts a little, like, napkin next to it in case of. And goes, I'm going to nod at the man. Thank you. <laughs> As you start devouring, uh, he looks at the rest of you and goes, may I uh, be of any he- uh, service to you, um? And he looks at you and goes, My name is uh, Duresk, but you can call me Dur. Well. Would you happen to know of a Kyla or where from here tavern would, or a tavern would be? He looks at you and goes, You passed one on the in. Uh, you hear in your head? You passed one on the way in. The Dancing Mark is the uh, only tavern that we offer to outsiders. I think in my head, how much do they cost for a night? He uh, he looks so he kind of changes his perspective over to you, Gygax, as you hear in your head once more. Uh, well, they're willing to. I believe that your rooms have already been reserved for you lot. You are the talk of the town for. Uh, the adventurers who showed up. We don't get many um, new faces around these parts. So, I assume as long as you're working for the city like you are, I think your rooms are paid for, as well as your food. Okay, thank you. He nods and goes, 
No, thank you for dealing with my kin. They just, they've been raging so much, it's not fair for the poor creatures. Would any of you like uh, a past another pastry or uh, some rations or a piece of candy as he holds out a box of chocolates and sits it on the counter? Tonton perks up with us here of no more pastries. I hold up another copper coin. He takes it and kind of put pockets it and goes, one moment. And you see him kind of head back into the back cor uh, back of the shop for a few minutes uh, as he starts kind of pulling things and like slamming things. A few minutes later, he comes out with another set of pastries freshly baked and sets them down in front of Tun Tun. Um, okay. Again, handing you, Gygax, a, another single piece of chocolate. Which I stick in the backpack. Okay. And he just kind of looks at you lot and kind of waiting, like awkwardly looks at each of you and goes, Is there anything else? I look up at Melvin. Yes. Uh, how much are some rations? Oh, well, one silver piece a piece is what I usually run them for. For you, I'll say let's do half that. Five copper pieces. For one for our day for one day's worth of rations, which is a single ration, as he points to the sign. I hold up three silver pieces. He looks at it and goes. All right, six ration packs, and he kind of hands them to you. Uh, he goes, no, two of them have pastries in them for you, as he smiles at, Giga at you, Gygax. I put them in the backpack. Okay, in your backpack or in um, uh, Ten Ten's backpack that he's carrying? I don't have a backpack. Oh, that's correct. That's right. So I assume in uh, uh, Ten Ten's uh, saddlebags? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Um, tun -tun, like the, sm the slight smell of pastries now will follow you wherever you, wherever you walk. It's it's quite enjoyable. It is. Once in a while, Tun Tun does a left hand circle. Yeah. <laughs> and you can tell when he gets hot, real hungry as he starts to only turn left, following the the smell. That's that's when you know you have to stop for the day. Um, he looks over at Melvin uh, that, and he goes, "Anything for you?" I'm broke. I hold up a gold coin. I uh, think I'm all right for right this second. I pull down the gold coin. The troll looks at you lot and goes, "If you're looking for, uh, then if you're looking for the inn, down the road to the left. Can't miss it. Big sign. Uh, also, lots of drinking people out front, as he says in your heads. I'll keep that in mind. Um, you wouldn't happen to know why you're." Or why the other trolls are as hostile as they are right now? You see him kind of scratch his chin and then scratch his head for a minute, uh, as if looking like it's kind of a, weird, a confusing question. He goes, mm, Morph troll is morph troll, not bright creatures. Well, thought it was at least worth it ask. Uh, thank you. For everything, you know, it could be the leer, the the dead, the death or down there that's causing them to go wild. Was, you, know, you see, the troll kind of ignores you for a second as it continues to think, uh, hearing its thoughts. It continues. It goes, "I hear that a lot of raw magic in an area causes all creatures to go angry and with power and interested." Well, I don't know. My my bet is that is that is probably they went mad. It's pr totally not something nefarious at all. Did you say death ore? Yes. As in a material, a mineral, an ore. Yes. Oh, okay. It's He looks at you and goes, it's called that for its addictive properties for those who use magic. It can cause uh, extreme magical failure and kill you if you uh, take too much of the stuff. Um, I believe commonly they chop it and snort it to get their magic spell slots, their spells back. Um, it's quite common amongst most mage nations to use in the uh, market. You can even buy potions for it, uh, made of the stuff at, at most public uh, adventuring guilds. The troll now goes on as if he's an expert on the subject for a moment. Me thinking back to when uh, that dragon-looking olithid was... Uh... You know, talking about how we had to fight these trolls in the Death Ore Mines. 
Oh, I was zoned out. You're good. Uh, the yeah, troll me, me too, to be honest. The troll looks it back at you lot and goes, Will there be anything else that I can assist you with for today? I uh, shake my head and I start walking up. And I <laughs> nod my head again as a thank you. Yeah, you see his tun tun turns and walks. Uh, Dutes, you were about to say something? Uh, no, I think that's all. Thank you very much for all you've done for us. He nods and goes, Make sure you speak up in your head in the future. It's hard to hear you. You don't have a loud, he loud, loud head. I hold up a <laughs> platinum coin. What currency do you use here? Current? We take color coins and we take uh, normal coins. What are you... Uh... This, what I'm holding, is a normal coin? That would be considered a common currency amongst the Draconic lands, yes. What's a color coin look like? Um, he kind of pull, like starts pulling out of a, a bag on his side, and he sets down a couple of different coins. Um, you see him kind of pop out roughly. Um, I'm gonna pull up the actual coins here. Give me a second, um, because there is actually a full breakdown of this. Oh uh, yes, those are the gi it's the giant currency, yeah. Uh, no, this is uh the troll currency. Uh, the pseudo trolls use this. Um, oh, so okay. he looks at you and goes, um, oh, of course I don't have it written on that one. Give me a m one moment to find mine. Because I know the giants use gems as currency. Uh, the giants, uh, yeah, that is correct. Um, all right. He looks at you and goes, I have, uh, the green coins are what you'd call a platinum piece. Yellow is a gold. Blue would be considered a silver. And red would be considered a copper. Okay, can you say that again for me? He goes, uh, green, uh, which is the best, is uh, considered a, the equivalent of a platinum piece. Uh -huh. uh, yellow, which is considered the richest, is a gold, the equivalent of a gold piece. Okay. Blue is the equivalent of a silver piece because of its luck. Okay. And red uh, is the equivalent to copper, as uh, every poor person, ha or every poor troll has red coins, but they all are angry when they have only red coins. And they go really fast. I grab a copper, a silver, a gold, and a platinum, and I hand them in my two hands and go, can I trade? He pulls out the coins and hands you one of each, yeah. I eat them. <laughs> all right. You can go ahead and add to your transformation uh, each of the Calorium colors. Uh, here, I'll put the toy yes. of the coins in there. I like the, uh, I like the sound of these, <laughs> this currency system. <laughs> uh, he kind of smiles at that and like as he looks at each of you and goes, If you need anything else, I will be here unless I'm replaced, in which a new troll will be here. And I morph into a pile of color coins. Yeah, you mount into it quite easily. Um, the coins seem to glimmer slightly. Um, they are slightly smaller and more, di but denser. Um, like they're not as. So wide. I'm a bigger pile. Yeah, so you're you're a bigger pile than like if you were gold coins, basically. And then I morph back. Okay. Uh, the troll doesn't seem to react as if uh, this is a day normal daily occurrence. Tun Tun is tired. I Tun Tun go to bed by time tavern all right tun tun starts heading out uh, looking for drink people who are drinking and starts heading towards the end uh, does the rest of the party follow? i attach my sled to tun tun and just let him pull me there <laughs> all right yeah tun -tun for the record even... for those that didn't know i spent all my money on a sled yeah tun tun doesn't even know that you uh notice your sled uh, as he just continues to walk with it <laughs> yeah I, I get i'm getting patience this time mm -hmm. but i might be getting money to pay for goods and services in the future. There you go. Dudes, what's up? I'll nod to him and say in my head, uh, again, thank you for everything. And then you, you see him wave goodbye as you walk out. Um, the rest of the party following after. Melvin and I imagine uh, Gygax kind of in the sled being pulled by Tun Tun, who, again, not phased, just walking along at normal slow speed. Um... Dude, no, my of... 51 feet are running very fast. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, as all of you kind of head towards the inn, um, 
The innkeeper, or the innkeeper seems to almost ignore you lot, handing you a, a set of keys for each of you, um, and then looks at Gygax and then picks the keys back and then just looks at Melvin, um, says in their head to uh, that, you're, that you guys need to take care of the mimic. Uh, they don't get their own room. Um, but otherwise, your rooms are paid for as you are kind of allowed to sit down in the tavern and do as you wish um, for, a few, uh, for the moment. Um, the tavern keeper herself, uh, a large, very clear illithid with very uh, predominant tentacles. Um, you caught the name of Vel, did not seem to be very uh, talkative to the, the rest of you um, as you kind of settle down uh, into some uh, seats by, as a group. Uh, pastries kind of brought out, sat at the table. Um, you see uh, also what looks to be, as they bring out some fresh meat of a creature most of you haven't seen before, but what I will to describe it for the audience, um, if you've seen the Murlocs from uh, World of Warcraft, imagine if you cooked those up and decided to feed them to people. That's what you have. It's very decoratively placed. Everything's very well cooked. The head seems to be cut off to the side. Limbs all, all um, kind of cut off and set off to be individual pieces. And then the rest of the body seems to have been cleaned and opened up for um, people just to kind of pull off of and eat. Um, I'll give it a try. Yeah, as you bite down on it, it's it's sweet and sour and in all the right reasons. Um, as you lot start to settle down for uh, dinner and start planning uh, your next uh, decision, um, we're going to leave off here for today. Uh, we thank I, you. I reach into the bag and grab a pastry for Tun Tun. Ooh. All right, yeah, you have... Oh. Go ahead, Tintin. Listen, you don't need to. You don't need to do that, man. I got pastries right here, in front of me. Um, oh, you mean that bartender served us? Yeah, yeah. She did. Yeah. She would have set you down like a full meal and everything. Yeah. Yeah, uh, with the full Murloc basically dish set out and splayed out with pastries for the lot of you. Um, as you sit ah. down, um, yeah. The uh, the very uh, the illithid. Um, or Mind Flayer uh, bar, or, uh, Tavern Owner doesn't seem to be very interested in talking to you a lot, but make sure your orders are brought out quickly uh, and without any issues or complaints as you lot um, are, sat, are sat down. Um, I morph into the plate of the wiggly tentacles with the sauce. All right. And then in my head say, can I have that stuff, please? The the gal, the Vel kind of looks at you and just kind of, with an anno annoyed um, yes in your head, uh, she turns and walks back in and goes and, Orders up food and then brings uh, has it brought back out a few more moments later. Um, and so every time, every time she brings pastries to me, thing in my head, I'm like, "Thank you, nice lady." You definitely get the sense she's not happy. You lot are in her in every time you say thank you. She kind of coldly ignores you um, as she walks off. Not like be, trying to be outright rude, but definitely as if she's not a fan. Um, but as you lot kind of sit down at the table, start enjoying your meals, and start contemplating what you want to do for your next day, or what kind of quest you want to take uh, on, um, seeing a quest board up in the corner, but that is very currently crowded by people, um, we're going to wrap up session here for today. Um, we Thank you all for watching. We hope you enjoyed the first Monday session. Uh, and next time, hopefully a little bit more organization, and I won't have forgotten some of the th or misplaced what I was looking for. Um, everything will go smoothly. So we thank you all, and we will see you guys next Sunday. Uh, take care.